Right, welcome to episode five of the Only Football Fans podcast. We've got a special guest today. We've got Jay Tab in for an interview. Um, he's luckily related to our very own Gory. So, um, yeah, he's got us um, an in with Jay. So we're going to have a, a little chat about Jay's career and what he's up to now. Um, he had a brilliant career, really. He started at Crystal Palace, youth career, went through the ranks, come through at Brentford, had a loan spell at Crawley um, and went on to play for Coventry, Reading and Ipswich. Also represented Republic of Ireland at under-21 level um, and also had um, spells in the Republic of Ireland squad as well. I don't think you ever made your debut though, did you, Jay? Um, uh, unfortunately not, no. I never, never made it on the pitch. I was on the bench once, that was it. Got closer than any of us have got, mate. I'm <laughs> close. <laughs> I just really want to... Want to start, Jay, with your, your youth career at Palace, mate. How did it all come about and what was it like? Yeah, it was good, yeah. I, was, I mean, I, I was like everyone, just started off playing like li- local Little League football and then started, progressed on to playing Sunday League. Um, and I, I actually went to I was at West Ham for a couple of years, just in their like, academy. Um, but then they had a few centres centre, 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 centre closed down, so I couldn't get there too far. And someone I knew was at Palace, so I went over there. And yeah, it was, it was good. I enjoyed it. It was, it was, good, it was a good club. They are doing well at the time. Um, so it's good to be involved in it, but I, I never really, never really progressed there. But even I enjoyed it, I really did. I, I made it up until I was like 16 and then yeah, things didn't quite work out. Who, who was in charge there? Was it Koppel when you was at Palace? Yeah, Koppel was, Koppel was the manager and he left. I can't remember, I can't remember who took over actually. Um, but yeah, it was, I kind of I kind of knew a few of the coaching staff there quite well. And I was lucky enough, I used to travel away, even when I was young, I used to travel away with a youth team and just like, oh, never, never, never involved, but just travel away and see what it was like to be part of it, which is good. Um, good experience, isn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, I was. I was very lucky to do that. Um, yeah, as I say, yeah, things like you know, just before you, you go through to your YTS, I, I never got a contract there, so I had to look elsewhere. D- did you did like when you left Palace? Did you then get you? Did you go YTS at Brentford? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because uh, so my you, you, my um, manager at Palace was a guy called Jeff Taylor, and then <clears> he left, he'd, he'd gone to Brentford uh, about a year before. Um, so I just called him up straight away, asked him if I come down for a trial. So I did. Um, but I went down for the trial and he wasn't actually there. Someone else was in charge and I had an absolute shocker. I mean, the worst trials of ever, ever all time. I was so bad. I remember getting on the train home I could, because my mum and dad couldn't take me. It was on a Sunday, like a Sunday match. I remember on the train back, I can't remember where it was. Um, yeah, I remember being on the train home going, right, that's it. I've blown that. There's no way I'm getting the contract there. <laughs> and um, yeah, but then he called me up and said he's he going to offer me one. So we had a few of the lads, few of the lads who left Palace all went to Brentford and we all kind of joined at the same time. Um, so yeah, I was quite surprised to get to get off of the contract actually. Oh, that's blinding, mate. Yeah, go on, Greg, mate. You got something to say? Yeah, no, I was just going to say he was a lot luckier. We had Jeff Taylor, obviously, when we was at Palace. He was he he signed like he got me the trial for Palace as well. Oh yeah. really? Yeah, like it's, yeah, it's crazy, really. And then obviously, like him and Jay got on really well, and um, he got taken to Brentford, and then. Uh, you know, I got binned. <laughs> <laughs> Ended up at Sutton United. <laughs> no, but obviously, do you know what I mean? Jay was, um, he was older and he progressed further in, in, into Palace than ever, I ever did anyway. But um, it, it says yeah. it all, Jay, really, doesn't it? You had a stinker of a trial and you still got further than it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was, it was, it was funny, really, that we, Jeff Taylor took us both to Palace. Yeah. He said, I was a little teacher's pet, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> You but could we were, run. That was the problem. You could we, run. We played for the same Sunday team as well back in the day as well. Yeah, exactly. Good, good time. What you two did? Not not together, but like the same team at different age groups as well. Oh, fair play. What, t- what team was that? Calls and Jets. Oh, oh you okay. play. Oh, you played for Calls and Jets as well, Jay. I didn't know. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Well. yeah that was, oh, that was oh, I think, yeah, I think that's pretty oh, much. Right. pretty much how I knew about them really, and then obviously like, yeah, it's mad. Yeah, they were the, they were the arch enemy. They were. I hated playing them. Hated old calls and jets. Gory was. I was Ooh. speaking to Gory earlier about it. Actually, Jones. He said you turned them over once. Oh, we turned them over every time. They were shit. But <laughs> <laughs> no, they were. They were a good side. To be fair, they were a good side. Or, yeah, horrible. It was horrible a good setup back play. in the day. I don't know. I think they kind of fizzled out. I don't know. Really know what happened once I sort of left. But yeah, all went downhill when you left, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Who was um? Where, where were Brentford at at the like when when you came in through their YTS? Like what what yeah. division in that were they in? Uh, they were League One at the time, yeah. So right. yeah, and that's kind of where they stayed the whole time I was there. Um, yeah, yeah. I came in and got for the YTS straight away and, and cracked on from there really. 
but yeah, I was, I was so lucky if it wasn't for Brentford, I don't know what, you know, I was that down and low without obviously being released. I thought, oh, I'll just pack it in, it's down. And really? Score. Yeah, so if it weren't for Brentford, I don't know what I'd have done to him. Yeah. It's mad, isn't it? Little little strokes of luck like that that yeah. change people's careers. Like you could have you could have just packed it in and yeah. I'd have to say if I, didn't, if I didn't if I didn't know the manager there, I wouldn't have got offered a contract because my trial was that bad. I mean, I couldn't have gone that. <laughs> so, yeah, and that's crazy, I, isn't it? Yeah, I was lucky. I need a need a manager, and he, he gave me a chance. So, yeah, Did you not have offers from anywhere else? Like at the time? No, no, I, can't, no I mean that was the first one I went to, but it's hard because you got so when you get to sixteen. Um, 15, 16, so many lads are getting released at the same time. It makes it hard. Like everyone's trying to fight for these same these little YTS positions in different clubs, but there's not that many positions going around. So it's um, it's very hard. So you, you need you do need that bit of luck to get off, get off the line. Yeah, because I remember I got a letter like when I got released from Palace, I got a letter, and like I was devastated, yeah. absolutely devastated, and especially by just getting a, a like a letter. Yeah, it's and crazy. then. It's, it's, it was at that time the options were, were nothing. It was like you know I didn't have anyone phone me up, nothing. Like I didn't I didn't realise it was the same for you. you obviously, you made it a little bit further. Yeah, a little bit. No, at the time he was a bit. He was obviously like in the youth setup. Like, I was still in the in, in the like little academy, you know. But like you know, I was thinking you would have had like, other offers from. You know, to get another YTS at another club and whatnot. Yeah, so it's just, it's, you, when when you do get told that they don't, they're not going to keep you on, it is the worst feeling in the world because all your hopes and dreams, like you feel like they dash there and then. Yeah. So you, yeah. You need to pick yourself up quite quickly, and um, yeah, it's hard, especially because you're only young at the same time as well. Like you've got the experience of what you would do as an adult and how to deal with it, deal with it. Um, oh. But yeah, at the time you have to you have to grow up quite quickly, I think. Yeah, big time, mate. What was the? Th- sorry, Boyle, did you? So you did you want to say something now? See the icon yeah, go up. Yeah, I was just kind of briefly touching on sort of what you said about uh, being. Is, is it a question of being in like the right place at the right time? Sometimes, re- not say regardless of the ability, because you have to have the ability to be worthy to play at that level for to move on in your career. But would you say that's how it was for you personally? Just a question of you said your trial wasn't very good, but yeah. you were in the right place, maybe at the right time, and you sort of elevated from there. Yeah, of course you do. You need it. You need that all the time. And obviously, you got the, you got certain players in like in the world who are, they're going to make it no matter what. But then you got you got another massive pool of players who are all just as good as each other, same attributes, same ability, really. And you do just need to be uh, right place, right time. It's like anything. It's like any walk of life, really. Like anything can happen just through little changes, of decisions here and there. Yeah. And especially with football, like that's why you, you never know. Is what I used to always think. Oh, my dad used to say, "Oh, you never know who's watching." Like even if you didn't fancy it, you say you've always got to try and. Yeah. I'd always say I was very lucky to get given the opportunity at the time. Important to have well, that kind of mental strength where that you, regardless, you sort of like had tunnel vision to keep going because some people don't have that in the locker. A yeah. lot of people don't see the mental side of that, especially at a young age. It sort of obviously shows the character that you are that you pursued it and you like carried on because it could have yeah. been easy for you to get the knock back and then think, oh, I don't really want to do this anymore and maybe go down no. the path. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, is, yeah. It knocks you, it knocks your confidence. So, and I say, I'll yeah, my hands yeah. up. If I didn't get offered a contract to Brentford, I probably wouldn't have carried on. I'd have done something different. I'd have bought. Yeah, incredible, mate. Like I'm 31 and I'm still waiting. I still, I still play. Like I'm, people are watching me. <laughs> 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 still waiting for me call up. <laughs> is, Jeff, is Jeff Taylor or whatever still about? Could it or can he still yeah. see us now or no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tap him up. Give me a trial. <laughs> Don't think they'd be interested in me in, in us now, Kyle. Sorry, mate. No, um, I need a fringe. So, so when you like you took on your YTS and uh, at Brentford, um, who? How long was it before you sort of made your break into the first team there? Um, it was actually I was in my first year YTS. So really, I kind of, yeah, I kind of went from having that knock back there and uh, then to getting off the contract, and it went well kind of straight away. Um, as soon as I went in there, the pre-season went well with the youth team, and then the season like we had we had a good youth team to be fair, and we. Things just took off and got confidence back and was doing well. I was playing up front at the time, like in the kind of number 10 role. Um, so, yeah, I was getting a few goals in that as well. Um, and Ray Lewington was the manager at the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Steve Koppel. No, Steve Koppel, sorry. Yeah, Steve Koppel was the manager at the time. Um, and, yeah, he kind of always, he kind of kept me involved. Like, every now and then I go and train with the first team, um, which was good experience. Like, a few of us would, like, a few from the youth team would go up and train with the first team just to get a bit of experience. And then... Um, a couple left for the end of the season and Ray Lunan took over. Oh, right. 
Yeah, am I getting this wrong? It might be. Oh, it was Ray Lewin and Austin Cobb, and then one of them left, and then Wally Downs took over for the last few matches. Oh yeah, I yeah. wanted to ask you about Wally. Yeah, yeah. He, t- he took over, and then he basically took over for four matches in the season, I think it was, and um, yeah, he gave me gave him a debut. So blinding. So so yeah. Wally Downs sort of called you up then. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, I, I, I just I couldn't believe it, to honest with you. I was um, yeah, wasn't expecting it one bit. They kind of said something a few week, few months before the end of the season. Um, yeah, it was definitely Ray Lewin, and he called me in and said, "Oh, look, if things go well, um, uh, like we we can might be able to give you give you a game. If we're not going to get relegated, can't get promoted, and we're just sitting around mid table, we might try and give you a game." I was like, oh, "All right, great." And then 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 he left. So I thought, "Oh, that's it, it's done now. It's not going to happen." But then yeah, Wally kind of carried it on, and yeah, to call. I was it was on a Tuesday evening, and just got told I was going to be playing, and I was like, "Wow, couldn't believe it." What was he like, Wally? Because like I've grown up in Wimbledon, and my dad sort of, even though he's a Leeds fan, he he's got a little bit of a soft spot for. For yeah. Wimbledon, and he's told me quite a few stories about Wally Downs and how much of a nutter he was. So, yeah, yeah no, you, you hear the stories in the crazy gang and that, and yeah, he was like that. He was just, he was just someone I got on really well with. Like, um, he was a bit, he'd take the piss out of me all the time, really. Like, he was, he was like that all the time. I was the one who'd get taken the piss out of, but at the same time, he, he gave me my debut and he, he was good to me like that. So, um, yeah, I learned a lot from him and still, but still, like, see him up until a few years ago, I'd still see him around like at football now and I always have a chat with him. That's brilliant, mate. Go on, Greg. You want to got something to say, mate? Yeah, no, it's just about your debut, mate. I literally, obviously, um, like you're quite a cool, calm sort of person, anyway. But I was just like, how how was that on when the actual debut? Like, how was you feeling? Like, yeah, I was. I was. I was, I was, I was to be fair, to you, I was, and I was standing in the tunnel where he's come out. I was tears in my eyes. I was crying. Like it's the end of the season, so they didn't have time to get a shirt to fit. I had this massive baggy shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it was back in the day though wasn't it massive yeah, yeah. didn't have fitted shirts mate no, I've, I've never worried about an oversized shirt <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah we know mate <laughs> you know I, I got told I was I, think I was training in the morning with the youth team and then they said alright get down to the get down to the ground got down there in the afternoon and the first team were going through like set pieces and um, yeah, well he read the line up and I was like he just said my name then and I thought he just like I thought he made a mistake I was supposed to be sub and I was starting, I was like, what? I thought, oh, there's no way I'm going to be starting my first game. I thought I might come on sub last 10 minutes. But, you yeah, know, I was starting and I was like, Jesus Christ. And then I still had loads of time to kind of get my head around it then. Uh, it was only four in the afternoon. So I quickly called mum and dad and that. And they got a big group of family to come down and watch. And, yeah, it was against Luton Town at home. I remember just standing in the tunnel and then coming out and you could see the fans looking, going, who's that? Like, I didn't have a <laughs> Yeah, and it, yeah, kind of. We went two 0 down early on, so it didn't start too well. But we came back and drew two all, so it was all right. Did you play all right in your first game? Did, and did it take you a while to sort of get into the game, or did you just? It was just once you started. Was it just like any other game you're playing in? Yeah, you're kind of obviously you're very nervous and and uh, just trying to blend in really. And I, I think I remember I, I made a few nice touches and that and showed I could could actually play a little bit. But I think I tried to lob the goalie from the halfway line and it hit the corner. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name, Terry Salibe? <laughs> no, oi, that's an Andrews trait. That, 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 that's, that comes from that side. That's where that. I got it from, mate. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Lover Lover. Mr. Lover Lover, yeah. Go on, no, Greg. We'd say we were 2-0 down at half time and it'd been easy for Wally to take me off, but he kept me on. And um, so I think I made it through to about 65, 70 minutes and we'd brought it back to 2-all, so I didn't feel too bad then. And then, yeah, the game finished and it was 2-all. And, yeah, it came off and it was, it was good. Yeah, I loved it. That's brilliant, mate. Go on, go on Greg. So, um, going on that, the Luton game, is our next guest, sorry to t- take it off subject a little bit, our next guest is Gareth Graham, oh, who, yeah. obviously, who obviously played with you as well. Yeah. And is that right? And he came on for you? Is yeah. that his yeah. debut as well? No, no, no. He'd been playing. He played he, he, he in the first team playing a load. Oh, he'd been playing. But, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. But he, um, yeah, he, came, he came on for me. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. So, no, because I read that. Yeah. So, that's what I was, I was wondering whether that was... Yeah. And he's like, your debut. What's that? Sorry, so he, that was your debut that that's he came on. That was my debut, yeah, yeah. So okay. um, that's a yeah, good little coincidence, that isn't it? That we've got him in next week. I mean, he tell you, he's some player. I remember mean, because he was in the youth team and at the Palace when I was in like the kind of under 15s. So when I used to travel away and watch him, he was actually he was the main man in the youth team. I mean, like top dog. He yeah. was so uh, so much talent, obviously. And um, yeah, even at, yeah, at Brentford as well, he, he did really well, and he actually had a horrendous injury. And uh, yeah, that bad. but I'll tell you what. I could, couldn't tell you how much a bit he had. Um, I used to go and watch him for the youth team and he would just score goals. I love the goalie from everywhere. and Yeah, just someone who always stood out, had so much ability. Is that what sort of scuppered his career then, that injury? 
yeah, yeah. Is it, I'm pretty sure it's it at Brentford. Um, and it happened. It was yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty it's cool. half of it, it's it's crazy. Obviously, we'll we'll ask him that sort of stuff next week. But like, I don't know whether he'll ever show. But like, half of his muscle is just missing. Yeah. Really. Oh, yeah, it's, like, yeah. It's, it's horrendous. Like when I first saw it, obviously he came like down to the lower leagues and that, and that's how I know Gareth. And when we were playing together, and then like I just remember seeing it, and I, I was like, oh my days! Like what happened? Like he was like, mate, that's that's my injury. That was it. Yeah. Half of his like calf is just gone. Yeah, it was. And that's when you talk about being in the right place, right time. That, but also injuries. And so yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about the amount of good players over the years who. If it wasn't for injuries, they'd have had really good careers. So you need yeah. to be, that's another thing. Yeah, you need to be in the right place at the right time, but you, you, you need to stay injury free as well. So you, if you get a bad injury, then like he did, it just, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you, like he was so talented, he would have gone all the way. I'm convinced of it. Mad. Go on, go on Kyle. No, I was just going to say, like, obviously, back to the Wally Downs thing. Hmm. Do, you, do you think he was a bit of a catalyst for you at Brentford? Because, like, I see that you, you had a couple of injuries as well, didn't you? Like, leading up to when he took over. Yeah. And then he did, was it his decision, obviously, to give you a new contract for the 0304 season sort of thing? Like, obviously, that's when you you sort of really kicked on with Brentford, when that was your sort of... Yeah, no, do you know what? He took over for the last few games, but then, then Steve Cobble came in the season after, for the next season. Oh, that, was it? Uh, oh, yeah. right. Oh, I, I, thought, I, thought, he, I thought he continued. No, no. So he came in and uh, Steve Cobble came in and then they offered me a pro contract, but I... It wasn't like I graduated straight into the first team. Then I got off the pro contract, but then I was still in the youth team all the time. And, uh, oh, right. Yeah, so I kind of made my debut at the end of that season, but then I didn't really progress into the youth team and for another few seasons. Uh, sorry, into the first team for another few seasons. Um, oh, right. Yeah, but I, I, just, I just got off the pro contract. That's what it was, but as a, as a youth team player. So, so what um, was yeah. so when you like fully broke into the first team, was a, a, a regular? Was that Steve Koppel then? No, that was Wally Downs again. So Steve Koppel got him through to the playoffs that season. Then he uh, they lost and he left. And then Wally took over full time then. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, and then I was kind of in and out then. I was still only, I was only uh, 17, 18, really. Um, so yeah, I was, I was playing here and there a um, few games. I played a couple under Koppel, um, but mainly coming on the sub. But yeah, I played a few for Wally. And then when, when Wally left and Martin Allen took over, that's when I really kind of became like a regular in the first team. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, Boyle. Sorry, Matt, I saw your hand go um, up there. Just, just a quick one. While you were at Brentford, I think I remember um, a couple of twins from my school, I think might have been there. Were Ed and Tom Hutchinson, were they there? When oh, you... Yeah, yeah, Eddie Hutchinson. Yeah, yeah I played, I played they, them. Yeah. They were in the year below me at um, Chaloner. When I, was right, yeah. I think one was at Fulham, wasn't he? And, uh, yeah, and one of them went on to play in Scotland, I believe. Yeah, I think that was Tom. Like, I played with Ed, yeah. He was, Dundee, he was... I think he played for or something like that. I just, Yeah, I wanted to just see if it was the same era. Yeah, yeah, same yeah, same guys. I played, played a lot of games with um, uh, Eddie Hutchinson in midfield, yeah. Was... Whatever happened to their... Um, how, I'm not sure how their career panned out. Did it? Was it through injury uh, or...? Ed, no, I know Ed was at Brentford for a long time. I'm not too sure. Yeah. But no, I, went, I didn't know his brother at all. But yeah, I've gone really well with Ed. Like, we played a lot of games together, so... Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then, um, so how long was was you sort of was Martin Allen there when you when you was was he only he was there for quite a few seasons, wasn't he? Yeah, I was there for two seasons. But he came in and then kept us up because we were in the relegation zone. Kept us up and then had two full seasons. So he kept us up and then the next season got into the like, did we get in the playoffs or just missed out? And the season after that, no, we got a two playoff campaign, campaign with him actually. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, kept us up and then we got into the playoffs two years in a row. And lost in lost in the semi finals both times, and that's when I left. But yeah, that's that's when mine took over. That's when I became like a regular in the first team, and he did a lot for my career. To be honest with you, he really did. That's brilliant, mate. Because I see you got Player of the Year as well in 03-04. Yeah. That would have been under Martin Allen, I think. That's right. Yeah, um, I think that was the fir- his first full season in charge. Yeah. His first full one, then that have been. Yeah. yeah. What What was that experience like for you getting into the playoffs? Like at, at that, you still a relatively young age as well to go through that experience. What was that like? It was heartbreaking, wasn't it? When you to not make it after yeah, it's, it's horrible it's like losing in the semi-final of a, like of a FA Cup or you know it's like we all played and you lose in the semi-final of a cup and you're like oh it's the worst feeling ever and it's the same in the playoffs really um, yeah because it's, it's, it's end of a long hard season as well and a lot of the teams who make it in the playoffs some of them miss out on automatic promotion on the last day of the season so you've got to pick yourselves up and then try and that go for the playoffs but yeah I had no luck in, in the playoffs unfortunately and it never worked out but it's this I mean on one hand, it's a good it's a sign you've had a good season, isn't it? You finished in the top six, so yeah. 
and not being in, yeah when you lose it when you keep losing in them it's, it's horrible <laughs> well I've like, like only obviously only experienced them as a fan and it, they're heartbreaking when you don't because yeah, everyone every set of fans for the four clubs that go into them are all got that mindset of we could do it yeah so it, it, it is it's terrible when you when you come on the other end of it yeah and it's, it's the hangover in the next season as well because like you you're carrying on for another couple of weeks so and then if you, if you don't get promoted then you're coming coming back in early and you're thinking oh it only seems like yesterday you're in the playoffs and now you've got to dust yourself down ready for a new season so yeah that's a hard part mm. of it as well so they're great if you win them but if you don't then it's um it prolongs the season and so you've got to get yourself ready for the next season pretty quickly. Hundred percent, yeah. Go on, Matty. Uh, just sort of going to touch on what you said about like dusting yourself down and <clears throat> going again. Like the championship, it just amazes me how many games that you have in one season, oh. even including like cup competitions. So to to get that far and then to kind of fall down by the wayside must be soul destroying. But I suppose there's no time, like you said, for sentiment. You've got to you've got to go again, basically, because it's the start of a new season, start of potentially another big journey for you ahead yeah I mean standing most of the time you say you, you do feel sorry for yourself because you're there and you're that close to getting up into the next league and especially in the, in the championship playoff final when you lose and you're that close to the premiership and then it doesn't happen you think oh and then you've got that <laughs> golden season ahead of you again in the championship but you say it's just game after game all the time especially, especially from like um, a club point of view as well because you're going to get your best players they might up they're in the shot window yeah. they get moved on and you could be like with I don't know, five, six new teammates in the new season, but then you've got to go again. So, yeah, so you say you, you can easily go from being in the playoff finals to um, bottom half of the league. Bottom half of the league, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you, a few players leave, then that's it, you've got to rebuild again. Yeah. That consistency just leaves, yeah, because you've got new players to bed in and it's a whole new journey, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. New so, time, so. So, so, following that, that your final season with Brentford in, in 06. Um, like you, you moved on to Coventry. How, how did that move come about? Uh, that came about. Um, that came that actually came from Jeff Taylor as well because he was <laughs> honestly it did. What, he, what he, a bloke! He, what a bloke! Uh, Dave Bassett and obviously Dave oh, Bassett yeah, and Mickey yeah. Adams are close as well. So Mickey Adams was the manager at Coventry at the time. Um, I was just I was on holiday. Um, and I, I was actually I was down in Wales. Our family used to go down there every year. Like. Just, a nice place down there, down the Gower. And Kenny Jacket, the Swansea manager, he lived down not far from there. And he heard that I was down there on holiday. Like I was just down there doing a bit of surfing and messing around with mates and that. And um, so I went to his house and met him to talk about, because Swansea had actually beaten, had gone up that season in the playoffs. So they beat us for Brentford in the semis and then they won the final. So he called me over and he said, look, I'll see, I'll see your contract's up and you're leaving. Do you want to come to Swansea? And I was like, oh yeah, like, it'd be great. It wouldn't have looked too good for getting, like, losing to him in the playoffs and then joining them. But um, <laughs> yeah, so I was like, yeah, I was, I was, I was all for it. I thought like, that'd be great. And then yeah, just got kind of last minute got a phone call from Coventry, and um, I actually did it all behind my agent's back because he, because it was through someone I knew. Um, I was just like, I was, I was like, I've got to go and see this place because Coventry had the Rico Arena. It was a big club, big name. Um, no disrespect to Swansea because look how far they've come since then. But at the time, they just got promoted, so. I was like, look, Coventry or Swansea, and um, I was like, yeah, I, I went to see, I went to Coventry, went there, met the manager and stuff like that, and saw the stadium. I was like, oh, there's no way I can't join this club. It's huge, uh, especially at the time I was, I've gone, I was going from from Brentford to and Coventry, a massive club as well. So I was like, this is, I've got to do this. It's a big step. Um, so yeah, I just kind of did it off my own back, really. My, my agent wasn't too happy. <laughs> it sounds like Jeff Taylor's your agent, anyway. By <laughs> <Yeah>. all <laughs> I'll tell you, what, if I'm going for him, I'll be knackered. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Greg. I was just about to say, what, what did you have that oh, I didn't know, Jeff? Did I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was I think we need to, to get him on, to be fair. <laughs> um, I was just about to say, like, about your agent, like, obviously, how did you break that to him? And, like, did he did he take it well? Like, obviously, he would have still got a night. Like, did he sort the move out at all? Like, did... um, Not at all, no. Pretty much, like, because he, he kind of been a little bit involved in the Swansea one. Um, yeah. And I kind of said to him, yeah, yeah, I like Swansea. And, yeah, and then I just called him. I said, look, I felt Coventry interested. And he's like, oh, I didn't know that. I was like, I'm going down there to have a look around. <laughs> so I went down there to look around and they offered me a contract there and then. So I was like, oh, he's not going to get here in time. So I just called him and said, look, I'm happy with the wages. I want to sign for him. And I'm going to, that's it. So you're get, you, yeah, you're getting, a, you're getting a fiver. And, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Your percentage is out the window, Sunshine. He was actually, he was, a, he was a really good agent. But it's, things like, sometimes things like that happen. Like, it's just someone you know word like yeah, well, so like yeah i mean like i say agents are great but at the same time you can do a lot of it yourself if you, if you really want to just yeah 
a manager or something, wouldn't you? But if Paul Scholes was the best agent there ever was. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah, so it was, it was good. To, you know, I say I remember going to Coventry, looking around and thinking, oh, I've got a sign for this club, massive, massive club. Massive, you massive obviously club. knew. Yeah, you obviously knew where you wanted to go. You obviously yeah. from, the, from the start, like, as soon as you got there. Yeah. Like you said, in hi- in hindsight, you see where Swansea end yeah. up. Yeah. Like no one was to know, but in, in realistic terms, like when we were kids growing up, Swansea would, yeah. were a, like third, fourth division club. You know what I mean? You, no one was to know where they were going. So if if any of us were in that position, you would be picking Coventry as well. Oh, they're a big club. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and say, so, um, and you, you say in hindsight, you look at what Swansea did there. They've gone from strength to strength, like a massive club, and look at the managers they've had and how they, well they've done. But at the time, yeah, I think everyone would have signed for Coventry definitely. That would have been a big midfield and all you and Leon Britton, wouldn't it? <laughs> We're on a few in the air. <laughs> yeah. Well, go on, mate. Oh I'm just going to quickly ask uh, Jay, like, what's, what was the relationship like with the agent after that? Oh, uh, it was, was fine. No, it was all right. Like, after a couple of days, calmed down a bit. And um, <laughs> Did he get his cut? Uh, <laughs> I left that to the club. I was like... Oh. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, he was, he was still my agent after that and he, he helped me out as well for yeah, a few more years. But yeah, it's just one of those things. You've just got to look after yourself, haven't you, at the end of the day. Yeah. That's it, mate, yeah. Definitely, what, yeah. What was that step up like from, from League One to the Championship? Was it a, Did it feel like a big step in, in quality and class or, or was there, there not much? No, it did, yeah. Uh, especially, I mean, when I first went in there, and, like straight away you're looking around in the, train, in the dressing room and you're like, well, so when I signed there, Don Hutchinson, Stephen Hughes, and Marcus Hall. These are players like you've been watching on Match of the Day pretty much. And then, uh, legend, mate, Don Hutchinson. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of players there. And you, all of a sudden you're like, wow, I'm part of this squad. And yeah, but a kind of. And Gary McSheffrey was there at the time as well. And he was. He was what a oh, player. what a player. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Was there pictures of Peter Nudlove all around the stadium or what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He was uh, <laughs> absolute legend. <laughs> and then Steve Grisby, the goalie coach as well. So. Yeah. What a beautiful That's bloke he is. Yeah. <laughs> Best looking fella in fucking football. <laughs> Ness has had a go on him, hasn't she? <laughs> oh, Nessa from Gavin and Stacey had a go on yeah. Steve Grinovich, didn't she? How, how do you know these facts? Does, where do you get that from? <laughs> that ain't a fact. That's, 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 that's from Gavin and Stacey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know nothing about Gavin and Stacey, mate. Yeah. I think that one was, was that Stephen Hughes, you said? Was he the, the kid at Arsenal who comes oh, to yeah. That footy yeah, fella. Yeah, just going to ask the same question. Good was player it? he was, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was. He yeah. was decent. Yeah, like that, um, so yeah, all of a sudden you're like, wow, these are the players I've got to try and get in the team in front of. So um, yeah, it was. It, it took a while to get used to it, but things went quite well. And I think it was after four games in, I got my debut or something like that. So um, and then I think a, a, a quarter way through the season, I was I wasn't a regular, but I was playing quite a lot of games. And if I wasn't starting, I was coming on the sub. So. Um, it wasn't like I went there and then I was just thrown straight into the reserves. I actually got a crack at it and got to play quite a few games. That's quality, mate. Yeah, I see. Like I had the got the stats on it in front of me. You played thirty-two games your first season. Yeah. Um, which is well, that's that's pretty impressive considering you've come from the division below. Yeah, like, exactly, to, yeah. to step up and make that amount of appearances, you obviously made an impression on them. Yeah, I must say, yeah, I, I, I did. I did all right. And do you know what, Gary McSheffrey left as well. He went to Birmingham, so that probably helped because he was playing left wing. And I, I came in as like a left wing centre midfielder or where, anywhere in the midfield, really. So I think I actually did kind of, well, not take his place, but I don't yeah, think you were coming, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're yeah, up for the battle. Yeah, I got, I got to play more games than I expected, actually, and then did all right. It's got a few goals and that and a few assists. So it was pretty good. He was a great player, Gary McSheffrey, actually. I really yeah. rated him. Yeah, and he's, a com- and he's a commentary lad as well. So the fans loved him as well. Like, yeah. He was the golden boy. And yeah, I say really, really good player. I was only there with him for a few months because he left to go to Birmingham. But um, from the time I was there with him, I, I learned a lot. He was a very good player. Um, the, I think you played with, with Leon McKenzie as well at, yeah. at Colf. Uh, was... Yeah, Leon McKenzie. Um, oh, I've got loads of names. Uh, Scott Dan, Danny Fox, Kieran Westwood. Um, There's so many. Like, yeah, I'm trying to think of the players who've left and gone on as well. Clinton Morrison, he came there as well. I was. Uh, I wanted to ask you actually about Clinton Morrison. Who's more Irish out of you two? Uh, <laughs> <Clinton. laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, he's another one. He was at Crystal Palace in the youth team when I was like just a kid there. So I knew him from Palace, and like him and Gareth Graham would have been in the same youth team. So I knew him from travelling around. And then he signed, and I played against him a few times then. And then when he signed, like yeah, it's a familiar face. I got really well with. 
Oh, that's quality. clinical, mate. The boy was clinical. I loved him. Go on, Greg. Was. Yeah, no, there was just a, there's a couple of players that I um I had a look at that at the time when you was at Coventry. Yeah. Uh, Michael Mifford. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he scored a two. I remember. I remember I mean, him. He's like one of the only Maltese players I've ever known. Like, <laughs> yeah. To make it in the game, and I just like at the time he was like quite a legend at Coventry. I was just like, was he that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was. He just he scored goals all the time. Uh, just played up. He played up front with like Dili Adebola a lot of the time, and they yeah. worked quite well together. Big man, little man, and yeah, he just one of those players just scored goals for fun, and um, yeah, the fans loved him as well. Uh, so yeah, he, he was he was good on that. He was actually my roommate there, so I spent a lot of time. Oh right, nice. Yeah, yeah. but there's also uh, there's another there's another young lad that came on loan, um, quite a well a Premier League winning captain now. I'm wondering how he was. 2008 to 2009, Jordan Henderson. Oh, do you know what? That was, he came, I, I left, I left, uh, yeah, I left Bobby. he came like, a few weeks after I left, actually, so I never oh, played. He's the, oh, oh, right. Yeah, that's right, yes, I never, I played against him when I came back there, but I never played with him. Oh, Any wow. opportunity to fucking bring it back to Liverpool, bro? Oh, no. <laughs> Jordan Henderson, he's run the Premier League. Oh, wait, I was doing my homework and I see that he came in on fair play, like, that's, a, that's a good bit of homework done I there. didn't know that, though. That, yeah, fair play to you. <laughs> I was going to say about Leon McKenzie. Was, was he an hard bastard back then? Because he obviously made the transition over to boxing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he went, I, I got an alright with him. Um, he's another Palace connection, so... But um, yeah, I got, I got really well with him. But I would not mess with him one. Bit. <laughs> like sometimes you, in pre-season, you do a bit of boxing, like um, get, get your fitness and that. And then one of our fitness coaches came in, was massive into his boxing, so we actually did a lot of it. And Leon was just different gravy. Yeah, he's just you wouldn't mess with me. He probably was the toughest lad there. Yeah. We grew up doing it, didn't he, with his family and that. They're exactly. I remember one family. Like, half time once he kind of not kicked off, but there's an argument with the lads, and he was one of them. There's a couple of them arguing. I was thinking. <laughs> Good job. I don't want to be arguing. Uh, good job. Shut up. He's gone. Yeah. 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 Stay out of this. <laughs> Stand behind Leon. Yeah. yeah. But look, not really nice guy as well. So I've gone well with him. Well, uh, you, you wouldn't have got it anyway, Jay. You would have swung above your head, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I, would have, I would have run anyway. I would have hidden. <laughs> but, so after after Mickey Adams was at, at Coventry, uh, Ian Dowie came in. Yeah. And replaced him. What was, what was Ian Dowie like as a gaffer? class yeah love football like the most enthusiastic manager I've probably had like um, I was lucky every manager I've played for I've actually gone really well with and been, been really lucky in that sense but um, Ian Dowie loved loved football really did and uh, yeah he was, he was really really good so Mickey signed me there which was great but then we started the season great and then it kind of started going a bit downhill and then he left and then so Ian Dowie came in and, and done, and done really well there just different ideas and stuff like that and yeah really I've gone really well with him really did was he prettier in real life than what he is in the <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I, used to be, I genuinely used to be scared. I remember being at home when I was younger. It was a Monday night. It was at West Ham playing, and I, I, had to, I had to have the lights on. I couldn't watch it in the like dim light. He to scare me. A sweat, a sweaty Ian Dowie screaming to scare me, mate. I'm telling you. Oh, have you that, seen his brother? That, that forehead goes on for a bit, doesn't it? Have you seen his brother? They, they're identical, mate. I don't know if he was was he with him at, at Coventry. Uh -huh. No, I used to come in every now and then. Well, he was involved in the coaching side bit, though, no. But they look really similar, Kyle. So if you see them together, mate, you'd have had fucking oh. nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> did, he, did, did he use the word Did he use the word bounce back ability? He was the one that fucking started that word. Did, yeah. did he use that in the half-time at all? Come on, lads, I know we're 4-0 down, but we've got the bounce back ability here <laughs> to get back. No, he was he was really good, really good, good guy, actually, good manager. And, and I, 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 quite, I learned quite a lot under him, actually. He was really good. So that, I think... I think it might have been under him actually in your second season at Coventry. You got player of the year there as well. Yeah, yeah, it's another one. So, oh, yeah, um, yeah, it's another manager I've got, uh, got managed to see off. But yeah, he was, um, <laughs> hey, that's my second season there. Yeah, we, 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 I was say played quite a few games under him and it went, it went well. Um, but again, Coventry, I was doing, I was speaking to a few Coventry fans the other night actually doing one of these, and it's a club that just start the season amazingly, be top of the league going well, and then. Just after Christmas, it'd drop off a bit and you find yourself looking over your shoulder quite a lot. Um, so, like Ian Dowie, he didn't do anything wrong, really, but it's just one of those things. We weren't doing too great, and um, it's, it's easy to get rid of a manager nowadays, isn't it? Instead of but they, yeah. That's the thing. Uh, it... Sorry, Tell. Just no, no, go on, mate. Being a big club, like, because obviously coming down from the original Premiership and whatnot, um, 
were they very much, as you say, like that, where you start so well and then come Christmas? Were they a club, like as a hierarchy, were they very much like that, where we can't be having this, we need to start pushing? Yeah, they were so ambitious and that they spent a lot of money as well, like um, on players as well. So, yeah, they, they were very much wanted to be going for promotion and not looking over the shoulder. Um, that's what they like. So, again, like, also, I don't think Ian Dowie done anything wrong, but it's, it's a lot of the time it's the players you got you need to answer for themselves, don't they? Really, but you can't you can't suck a whole squad. You got to go and sack a manager. So that's what happened. Yeah. When, when you was there, was you was Michael Doyle playing for Coventry at the time? Yeah, he was there. Yeah, he was he was uh, he weren't captain the first season. I think he's captain the second season. Yeah, he played in midfield. Yeah. What What did you think of him? Because like obviously, again, bringing it back to Leeds, like we had him at Leeds yeah. uh, when we was in League One, and the the guy was. He was blinding. I thought he was a fantastic midfielder. He was, yeah. He's the fittest player I've ever played with by a mile, like running in pre-season and stuff like that. Yeah, he just non-stop, like really, just a pure runner. Um, and yeah, again, he'd be quite harsh on the pitch with you. He'd expect a lot of his teammates and he'd be right in your ear all the time, giving yeah. you... Yeah, good and boy. Just, yeah, as soon, as soon as the game finished, you'd be nice as fire, you know. Um, so yeah, I got, I got on the right. I mean, give me... I was, I, was quite, I was a couple of years younger, so he'd be giving me a lot of stick and... In me a lot of the time, but yeah, it was, I've seen him since then, and we've we gone pretty well. That's quality, that. Yeah, he, he, when we went trying to throw a challenge in as well, it'd it, be uh, be quite tough. That's what I loved about him. I thought he was quite an hard player. Actually, he used to steam into to tackles, mate. He, he he'd never get bullied in the middle. I thought he was a cracking player. He was, yeah, he, he did well. He had a good career as well. He did, yeah. He was a good footballer. Um, so then, like you, 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 you stayed at Coventry one more year, and then. Ended up moving on onto Reading. Yeah. So um, how, how did that that come about as well? You move over to there. That's quite funny actually. Like uh, Chris, Jeff, Chris Coleman, Jeff Chris, Taylor, yeah, Jeff Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He actually was at Reading when it happened. But after, I can't... <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh, no! no. He down. He was there. Um, he gets about this. He gets about this geezer, doesn't he? Oh, blimey. Oh, are you two joined? Did he hit or something? Or not? <laughs> Scout, I tell you. Oh, oh, mate. Yeah, no. But yeah, Chris, uh, Chris Coleman took over for me and Dowie, and then we had the same thing. Started the season class going really well, and then after Christmas, we kind of mid table ish. And um, yeah, just uh, he called me in. Um, it was actually on a Saturday before before a game. We were playing Plymouth at home. And he called me in, and he said, Look, uh, uh, two clubs interested in your Wolves and Reading. And he said, I'm guessing you'd like we've expected an offer from Reading. I was like, Oh, wow. He said, Look, you're going to go on Monday, but. So you don't have to play the game now in case you get injured, but I want you to play, like I need you to play. I was like, yeah, no worries, I'll play. He said, but you'll be going on Monday. I said, oh, grand. So uh, he said, but if you're going to play for me, make sure you give me your all. I don't want you to shirk anything just because you're leaving. I was like, yeah, no problem. Um, you know, playing Plymouth at home and we're 2-0 down at half time and I was a shocker. <laughs> <laughs> so coming and sitting, sitting down in the change room, none of the other lads knew. And he looked at me, he's like, you fucking wanker. I said, I told you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, oh, shit. So, anyway, he kept me on. I managed to come on and we, I think we turned it around and won. But, yeah, he went for me big time. So well, He just outed you in front of the whole squad sort of thing, right? Like, kind of, he was, it was, it was, at, he was aimed at the whole team, but he was, he was, he was looking at you. <laughs> exactly. So, he didn't let on that you were going then? Oh, uh, no, not until after the game. After the game, the lads knew them. Um, but, yeah, luckily it turned out all right. I think we came back on one, but, yeah, he went <laughs> So yeah, then he I'll don't just... give a fuck. He's going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Like, yeah, played the game Saturday and then Monday went into the training ground, got my boots, and drove down to Reading. So it was yeah, it was a choice between uh, Reading and Wolves, and uh, both of them were top first and second in the cha- championship at the time. And uh, I, I, was, I was a little bit. I mean, I know Coventry's not a million miles away. But I was a bit homesick. I'm missing family and that. So I thought, oh, Reading, perfect. It's a bit close. To not home. far, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So I thought, I'll sign for Reading. They get promoted, and then <laughs> Wolves got promoted ahead of us. And we didn't. Oh. <laughs> So yeah, it's a good decision. <laughs> so where did you finish then in your in your first season there? Uh, we we I say Reading and Wolves both were quite far clear, and then Red, Reading just had a bit of a wobble up and momentum lost and everything like that. And when got in the playoffs and lost to Burnley in the playoffs. Oh mate, that's a right, sick enough. It was, it was a great. I was, I was so happy with the move. You know, it was, it was close to home. Mm. Um, played in that, Joe. What's that? The playoff. You played in that. Yeah, played Burnley away and uh, lost. I think we lost one nil away and then two one at home or something like that. And yeah, something, but yeah, I played in both of those games. Uh, but yeah, that was a typical situation where you've been read and have been in the playoff uh, in the automatic promotion positions all season and literally lost out on the last day against Birmingham at home. And then you're going into the playoffs and you're just everyone's so down, like you're that close. Down, yeah. yeah, it was, it was, it was inevitable we we're going to lose. We're going to be like, it was we're in a happy place then. 
No, exactly. Yeah, you're like, oh, <laughs> you know, you've thrown it away basically. I think they were ten points clear at Christmas in, in second oh. or first, and then they had literally chucked it away. Um, so yeah, but it's still a great move. I was delighted with the move getting down that again. Another massive club that like you go in the changing room and you see all the players there. You're like, wow, it takes you back a bit. One thing I wanted to ask actually, when you signed, did you meet um, John Majewski when you signed? Uh, I yeah, when I actually signed, when I went down there to like talk, uh, talk kind of. Um, terms and stuff like that he wasn't there but when I actually signed the contract yeah it was with him yeah it, is his barnet a syrup no oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, no anyway it might be but it's a good one if it is didn't he use the guy of Silla Black I think he did yeah I'm not too sure <laughs> how fuck you how do you know that <laughs> I, don't know right. I know that I don't know why it's a bit like Kyle with Gavin and Stacey mate right, Kyle. <laughs> oh, Kyle's gone that's a touch. <laughs> um, so some of the players, I had a look at some of the players that was in that squad at, at Reading. There's some ridiculous names on, on that list that played there that some of them are still in the Premier League, like Gilfie Sigurdsson, yeah. Mikel Antonio, Ryan Bertrand, Shane yeah. Long, Alex that, McCarthy. Loads. That was, that was more towards the kind of end. But yeah, when I first went down there, the one I was most impressed with, because I was a Chelsea fan as a kid, I walked in the change room and Michael Doobie was sat there. Oh, dudes. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was a huge Chelsea fan. Uh, man. He, was, uh, he could have a ball, couldn't he? Yeah, and I, do you know what? I walked in and didn't even say hello. I walked in, the first thing he said was, fucking hell, what we spent our money on here? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Cheers, oh, dudes. <laughs> yeah. But no, he was a really, really nice guy, actually. Yeah, gone well. But to play in the same team as him, just for, even it was only for a few months, but it was good fun. He's a good player, dudes, actually. Again, I think he was underrated. Yeah. I think because of the position he played and he was unlucky at Chelsea because they had like Desailly and yeah. players of big names at the time. He just fell out of favour, didn't he? I, was, I loved him as well. So I was a massive Chelsea fan. He was one of my favourite players as well. So don't think I ever told him that when I was at Reading. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, uh, your autograph, please. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's, I don't know if you've seen it, Jay, but he's, he was on that podcast, Under the Cosh. Um, it's very, very good. His one was good. Was it? Oh, quite a few decent ones on there, but it's like he's, he's got a story. He's got a few. Yeah, yeah. So the thing, yeah, places, yeah. like clubs he played for as well. So yeah. it was when he was telling the story, Matty, about I can't remember what club it was at now, where they the owner was dodgy and he was trying to spike his pasta with cocaine so he'd fail a drugs test. <laughs> yes, have to pay it. What? Yeah, what club was? Oh. I, can't I can't remember where he was at, but but that's right. Yeah, you are correct. Wow, didn't okay. know that. Oh. Yeah, they, he said that they like they he brought his new owner in, and they they basically someone oh, inside it said, "Watch your grub," because he's gonna throw drugs in it. So you fail a drugs test, then they don't have to pay you off, and they can get rid of you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For the life of me, I can't remember what club it was now, but yeah, he 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 did say that. Yeah, unbelievable, mate. He was but, elite, well, wasn't he? What's that? Must have been Leeds, I reckon. I think it's Leeds. <laughs> No, that problem with us is we paid every fucker. We yeah. pay him too much. We just we double dubs his wages just for the just for the fun of it. Before we ended up with so much shit. Nightmare. But um what I was gonna say actually, like with with the likes of, of Gilfie and, and Mikel Antonio and that at, at the at the time, did you always sort of look at them and Alex McCarthy as well and look at them and think they're definitely gonna step up to the prem and they've they've got what they, what it takes? Or, or was you surprised by any of their like careers, Gilfie, not one bit. He's the best player I've ever played with. I knew it from the moment. Of really? Him. Yeah, he trained. He was only in the youth team when I joined, and uh, he trained. He tried come up and trained with the first team every now and then, and just honestly, he'd whip free kicks in in training, like for for fun. Um, and like we, sometimes you do first team and uh, just doing the shaping up for the game on a Saturday, and they'd play you against the youth team just as a bit of a you know, the youth team would set up against the team like you're playing against, and. Um, yeah, obviously the first team and Gilfie being the youth team, he's <laughs> just been whipping free kicks in against the first team. It was just a joke, really. He's so good. Uh, and Michael Antonio, yeah, he was actually used to give him a lift in because we live quite close to each other. So um, he was only a young lad. Something he signed from two and a Mitchum or something like that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. He used to another ones of boy. Yeah, yeah. I used to give him, we used to go into training together. Like really nice lad as well. He's quite. He was quiet at the time, but he, he was um, yeah so much ability as well. So strong and quick. Like. Um, yeah, he wouldn't want to get in his way and train him. But yeah, all those beasts, didn't he? Yeah, they're all Alex McCarthy. Yeah, you, could, you just all you could tell they're all going to make it. All so much talent. Again, like before I pass over to you, Greg, Alex McCarthy, we had him over at Leeds on loan for like he was only there for like a, 
like a couple of months or something, and you could see at the time he was a class above goalkeeper wise. Yeah, he, yeah. he looked different class. He was only a young kid at the time. Yeah, yeah. We were That's desperate to sign him, but we were skinned, but we, we couldn't get him in. But he was yeah. top draw. Yeah, you can see how he's uh, what he's done now. Like, it was what's going to happen. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Go, go on, Greg. Sorry, mate. Yeah, no, just going back to obviously that was a question that we was going to ask anyway. Like the best player you've played with. Yeah. But, um, so like you've got, obviously got you got into the island squad, and I was just going to say like was Robbie Keane in the squad? Yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah, that was. Um, so yeah, I played a few. I played in the twenty ones for a bit, and then yeah, I got called up. I can't remember how it happened actually. Uh, Jeff Taylor, as you know. Um, loves <laughs> 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 it. Yeah, he's, he's Irish. Um, so uh, Jeff. <laughs> he needs to be knighted, this man. <laughs> uh, I can't, can't remember. I got called up actually. It was a bit out of the blue. Um, it was, I think it was the end of the season. It was like a more like a training camp for Ireland. They've gone away for a few weeks and then have a few games. But yeah, it was like a little training camp in Portugal, I think. And yeah, they were all, they were all there. Robbie Keane, Damien Duff, Shea Gibbon, John O'Shea. Because that's what I, I kind of said to Kyle. I was like, oh, I would have, I would have said obviously like Robbie Keane. Was was maybe probably like the best player, but but for you to say that, obviously, I mean, Gilfie Sigerson's obviously turned into an unbelievable like Premier League player, like it's, yeah. it's a joke, like the technique and everything. So it, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that you've said that anyway. But I was yeah. kind of, I was, I was going to lean personally. I was going to thought like thought you was going to say Robbie Keane. Yeah, do you know what I think he's probably one of the biggest names I'd have played with, if you know what I mean, because yeah. he's Robbie yeah. Keane, but. At the same time, it was like a training camp. Uh, I never played with him in the team. Actually, yeah, that. So, Gil, I played quite a bit with, so I'd, I'd always say him. But yeah, I mean, you look at Robbie Keane, Damien Duff, like some of those names. And yeah. you, every every time you go up, make that kind of little step up to the next level, you you look around and you see the names of the players there. And the worst part was having to the, the initiation song <laughs> in the Ireland squad standing oh, up no. in front of all those. Oh, man. No. Was, was, was Jason McAteer in the squad? What's that? Was Jason McAteer in the squad? No, he had, he had gone by then. Um, oh, yeah, I can't remember everyone who was in it, but yeah, it was, it was a good squad. Steve Finnan, he was in it. Yeah. He was, yeah. He's a Wimbledon boy, isn't he? he yeah. Went to yeah. Glad, didn't he? Did he go to our school, Carl? Did he go Rutledge? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Oh, oh, what yeah. song did you sing? What song did you sing then, Jay? No, that was lucky. They let me and Kevin Foley do it together, so we didn't have to do it on our own. And uh, we did. Um, uh, She's electric. <laughs> <laughs> How does that go? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was that. It's definitely one of something like that. Yeah, but me and um, yeah, it was that song. It definitely was. Yeah, me and Kevin Foley standing up there in front of the whole island squad. Oh, it's so embarrassing. Yeah, couldn't put a note together between us. It was just no. terrible. <laughs> That's got to be a killer. That has to be. I bottled a few, mate. I'm telling you, I bottled a few. It's the worst. It's the worst thing about going somewhere else. I'm sing yeah. a flipping song in front of everyone. It's not worth the move. Put it in your contract. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll stay where I am. Just sit in the reserves. Fuck it. I ain't yeah. singing. <laughs> <laughs> um, another one you you played at, at, at Reading, yeah. who's one of my heroes, is and he's a, he's an Irishman as well. Is Ian Hart. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he was at the back end of his career at Reading, but how Pretty good was he job. even then? Oh, amazing. Yeah, he came in and say he was one of the reasons we got promoted, really. His set pieces and it's just his, his um, experience as well at the back. And he just, like, one of those, I don't, I don't know if he'd ever missed a penalty in his life. He probably hasn't. I don't think, I, no, I tell a lot. I, I remember him actually missing one at Leeds, um, but very few. If Even yeah. free kicks, mate. When we had free oh. kicks back then, it was sort of like, this is a goal. Yeah, how's, yeah, yeah. How's yeah. that set piece, by the way? Sigurdsson and Ian Hart. Yeah, right yeah, and yeah. left over it. He's standing <laughs> over it. The keeper's fucked, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was again. Like he's just it's one of those things you look back and you think now you say you played with players like that. It's, it's a quite amazing thing to say, really. So get another player yeah. watching in the watching in the Premier League, you know, on match of the day. Champions League as well. Like he was yeah. in that Champions League team, wasn't he? He was, mate. Yeah, he was one of our massive players back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I remember watching the match a day all the time, and it's quite cool just to think, oh, wow, I'm actually playing with these guys now. It's yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's some accolade to have played with some of these players, mate. Yeah. I had in my head, I said to Philippe, I don't know, uh, Jason Kumas, is, is, have I just dreamt that about you or saying, no. or did you, has Greg told me that he was one, that he was a player that you, no, I played, played, against, played against. No, I played against him. For Brent against him, yeah, for yeah. against him. He was one of, like, when people say I was the best player you played against, at the time, we played, so he was playing for Brentford. It was away at West Brom in the League Cup, and they thumped us 4 0. Like, and he was just unbelievable at the time. Yeah, I couldn't get near him. I was playing, I think I was playing centre mid, and I just couldn't get, couldn't get near him. Yeah, made me look stupid. <laughs> um, yeah, it's good. He's a, he's a cracking player. Actually, he should have had a better career, Kumas. 
hundred percent. He was a he was a name, wasn't he? Like he was touted as a as a name, and he just I don't know what happened. It kind of just went a bit sour with him, didn't it? Did yeah. mate, yeah. I don't actually know what happened with him. He just sort of disappeared and just. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. He'd done the he'd done the Tarat or Tarat done the Kumat, whatever you yeah. want to call it, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to pull it. <laughs> um, also, another like the, the manager who came in at, at, at Reading as well while you were there, Brendan Rogers. Yeah. I think it might have been his was it his first job? Uh, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, because he'd, he'd been uh, um, at Chelsea, hadn't he? He'd been yeah. at Chelsea. Yeah, uh, Reading was his first job. Yeah, uh, Coppel left that summer when we lost to Burnley. Coppel left. Uh, and then Brendan came straight in, and yeah, it was a totally different way of coaching and approach to the game. But yeah, got gone really well with him, um, and look at the career he's gone on to have as well. Unbelievable. Exactly. Yeah, he's gone, Greg. But before I pass to you, actually, Greg, boy, yeah, I don't know if you've got any questions because Matty's he's half Scottish and he's got an affiliation to Celtic as well, so he might have something to say about Brendan Rogers as well. But the before funny, he goes, funny, thing, uh, funny thing about Brendan is because obviously you know what he's like. It's all football, 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 pass, pass, pass. Yeah. So he's come in there. And I think he just overestimated my ability. To be honest with you. <laughs> in pre-season, he was like playing free in midfield. He's like, right, Tabby, I need to go and get the ball off the back four. I was like, what? I oh, don't do that. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. I'll just run up and down and I'll get it and give it to someone good. And he's like, oh, get, get the ball, pass, pass, pass. I was like, Jesus. And kept doing it and getting caught with the ball. And I think he, he, he kind of figured out quite soon that I wasn't, that wasn't my game. <laughs> go, go on, go on, Greg. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, obviously, like, so he had his education sort of at Chelsea and uh, like under Mourinho as well, wasn't it? I think. That's right, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So like when he came in, and obviously he, I suppose Koppel being Koppel, very old school, you know, probably just four four two. Um, what was that like as as like as a whole with with him coming in and just changing the whole dynamics and like as you say. Getting you to go and get the ball off, off of the back, like back yeah. three or whatever, and it's like. But anyway, as a club, as 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 how he approached it, how was that like? Yeah, it was totally totally different to answer. Like even the, the training sessions, everything changes. Um, and he, he wasn't afraid to give the youth, like young lads a chance. There's a lot of kind of players in the youth team who were just progressing, and he put them in straight away and gave them a crack. Um, yeah, he did. He wanted like there was no no room for long ball there. It was he wanted you to pass it, get it down as many passes as you can. Um, which is great. I mean, but it does test you. I mean, it's, it's great if you're a young kid and you can put that into your game. But I was 26, I was five, six, seven at the time, and I was like, you know, I know my strengths, and that ain't one of them. I told you the like, um, old dog new tricks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> could you, like, like we asked you with the players and that, like what, these players, could you see like progressing up to the prem and going, going to the top? Could you see that with him? Was he that? Was he? Was he like at that sort of stage? Was he a level above the sort of coaching and sort of things you've had before, or, yeah, or not really at that very, stage? Yeah, it, it was a very like um, kind of new and European approach, I'd say. And it was, I say, I, you could tell it was going to work for him. And it, I just think Reading probably wasn't the right club at the time for him. Um, it, it's, it's great things start off well, and it, it, it's great you can have your say and have your impact on the club. But it, it didn't start off too great, and we would find ourselves kind of a win here, lost and then lose a few and we were down the mm. end of the table um, and you see after he left Reading he went and done, done great at Swansea I think it was um, but yeah it was just it probably was just the wrong fit at, the, at that time I'd say I suppose it's I'll rate him like, I'll, I'd love him at United I'd honestly like, I'm a United fan yeah. I just think he's gone on to become a top manager yeah, yeah. Top, yeah. top manager yeah. like, but like mm. the championship is probably to come in and try and play that sort of way of football, the championship is probably not the place to do it, especially not at that time. Obviously, it's evolved now, the championship. Like, a lot of teams are trying to play a bit of football in that now. But, I mean, back then, it probably wasn't the place to try and play total football, was it? No, it wasn't. And to be honest with you, we probably didn't have, like, we, we, had, we had a, didn't have the squad that was probably going to be do, doing that anyway. We had a really hard-working squad of mm. uh, good lads and honest and stuff like that. But, yeah, when, you, when, when you're trying to get lads to pass it all the time, it's you need to be you need to be technically gifted. Um, yeah, I, I, speaking of myself, I definitely weren't. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I could tell. Like he had he had a lot of um he had a lot of self belief in himself like, as well, and you could tell he was going to go further. Like it's weird, even when even when he when he uh, when he left when the club sacked him, like it's almost like he didn't care. He was like, yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it anyway. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he was. He was like, yeah, I'm on the way up. He's like, I'm in the centre of that. He's like, look, I'm sure it hasn't worked out. Good luck to you. 
Um, and yeah, I think the next season he was um, he was in the playoff final with Swansea against us. That's the, you got just some self belief from him, isn't it? Really, yeah. it's such a young yeah. manager to to have that sort of attitude to be like, well, next yeah. next job I'll do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly what it's like. Next. Yeah. And I must admit that Swansea team that he had is one of the best teams I've seen in the Championship. Yeah, they were the football they used to play was it? They, they were the the sort of first of that mould, really. That yeah. really used to just tear sides apart. Yeah, I'll say the two, the two teams in the Championship that stick out in my mind with total football, like when I was in there, was would be um, West Brom and Swansea. They are the ones they used to always pass, and then toward, then towards the end, um, Bournemouth as well. Um, yeah, they were good. Yeah, but Swansea at the time, Swansea and West Brom, they could just pass it for fun and. You know, if you've got a team who can keep the ball that easily, then it makes it harder for you and you do a lot more, lot more running, that's for sure. 100%, yeah. And then, obviously, when, when Rogers moved on, like Brian McDermott came in, Penfold. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> came in and, well, the rest is history, really. The, the, oh. the, the job that he done there, mate, was something else. Uh, that, that season where, where you ended, uh, that, was it his first season you went up? Well, the first, no, the first season, came, he, he, so he took over from Brendan and kept us up, like, um, right. Chelsea, man. not even not only kept us up like we only just missed out the playoffs so um, it's just two totally different approaches he came back in and he would have been more like the Steve Coppel approach if you know what I mean and yeah it, back to basics yeah pretty much that's what it was and it worked and went well and then the next season I think it was um, that was when we lost in the playoffs to Swansea against Brendan and then the season after that we won the league yeah because I remember you started terribly didn't you under him and yeah. um in that next, the, the season you did get promotion. Yeah. And then the second half of the season, well, I, I've got the stat here, you won 17 out of the last 23 games. Yeah. Win the league by a point. Yeah, I mean, that, that season, too, that's when you get a typical playoff hangover. Like, we'd lost in the final to Swansea. Uh, then you've got to pick yourselves up in the, the next season. It's just say, I remember we played Stevenage at home in the FA Cup, third round, and um, we lost 2-0 at home. And I remember sitting in the change room, we just lost 2-0 at home to Stevenage, and I think we were we were definitely look, looking behind us rather than in front of us in the league as well. And yeah, I was thinking, oh, and then, yeah, we just signed Jason Roberts in January and then we just we went on like that amazing run. Honestly, it was unbelievable and just things just went, couldn't go, couldn't do anything wrong really. It's crazy. What, was it a bit of a sort of snowball effect that once you started getting all them wins under your belt, did you go into games just thinking we're unbeatable here? Yeah? Oh, pretty much, yeah. We, we kind of, we just snuck up and won the league out of nowhere because, yeah, we, we got halfway through the season. We're not thinking about winning the league or even getting promoted. You're thinking about, all right, let's make sure we don't go down. We just <laughs> make, make sure we don't go down. And uh, yeah, we just kept winning and winning. And all of a sudden, it got, gets into the end of March. And you're like, wow, we just snuck into the playoffs now. Oh, that'd be great if we get in the playoffs. And then halfway through April, you're thinking, Jesus, we could actually get promoted, like win the league. And yeah, and it happened. Like just last, I think the second last game of the season, we won the league, and that was it. it was just, Different yeah, class. Over. Yeah, it's just it was just one of those things. It's, you're never going to do it again to go on that kind of run. To be honest, I don't think that'll ever be done again, that sort of come from nowhere to win the league. That, that was it's unbelievable. Yeah, the numbers. The numbers. Yeah, like, if, you'd have, if you'd have said to anyone in that, that uh, showed them the league table in January and said, right, who wins the league? No one would have read it. So, yeah. yeah. It'd be amazing, great experience to be involved with. And yeah, I think it's that kind of, that kind of carefree attitude. Like, you're kind of thinking, right, you know, got nothing to lose. Let's make sure we don't, you know, we're not going to get promoted. Just make sure we don't go down and just keep winning and winning and winning. And before you know it, you're on that kind of, um, that momentum is going and then you realise you actually can get promoted and it just happened. Yeah. Go on, Greg. Sorry, mate. Yeah, no, I was just going on that, on that run. Um, like, did you have anyone sort of mates at other clubs that were like kind of saying to you, like, what's going on? Like, what are you lot playing at? Like, <laughs> and, like we're a bit worried, like saying to you, like, we're like, you're not catching us. Like, what's going on? <laughs> I think middles were the ones that are the most sick because they're the ones who we picked to, to win the league. Um, I remember we, I think we beat, uh, I think we drew, like, we just got promoted on the Tuesday night, guaranteed to be in the top two. And then on the Saturday at home, we drew, I think, with Palace actually. And then that night, middles were lost at home and then we, we won the league. But yeah, I think I think everyone was just taken totally by surprise, by to be honest with you. I couldn't believe it. And there's some party, I must admit. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I bet that was some party after that, wasn't it? Jesus uh, Christ. It was, yeah. I mean, the Tuesday night, so we we, we beat Nottingham Forest 1-0 at home and then West Ham lost away to someone. And uh, yes, yeah, so we like, obviously, pitch invasion, guaranteed to go up. And we got in the changing room and uh, everyone straight in the cars down to London. Can't remember what club we went to, one of those swanky posh ones. And uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely got on it. 
Steve. Got to be your biggest. It's got to be your biggest. That's obviously your biggest high, is it? I'm yep. guessing biggest. But nothing's touched, got anywhere close to that. I'm taking when, it. When, is it? when that final whistle went, and I knew we'd been knowing, I didn't have to play in the playoffs again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, it was no, it was unbelievable. Like, I remember everyone just invaded the pitch and like, wow, I'm gonna be in the Premier. Like, don't get me wrong, you kind of know in the back of your head you're not gonna be playing much in the Premiership, but knowing that you just got promoted and it's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. Yeah, it was, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It probably explains why after that Forest game you you drew with drew with Palace and then lost to Birmingham. You're yeah. probably all still hung over, wouldn't you? Oh, definitely, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I mean, the Birmingham one. Oh, yeah, we got three 0 We lost away, and um, yeah, it's one of the, the, you know we've done the job. But um, it was yeah, not a great way to finish the season. But um, yeah, I think uh, you can uh, that mate, who cares? <laughs> yeah. What, what's yeah. that sort of that feeling going into that summer, knowing you're going to be a Premier League player the following season? That must be like what, what's that like? That's that feeling. <laughs> yeah. It was um yeah it's just it was, it was, it was cha ching. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no yeah it was, it was kind of a little little bit like that. Don't get me wrong. It's like you, you kind of you're thinking oh wow like we made it to the top league now. But um from my point of view I wasn't a regular that season for Reading anyway. I'd have been in I think you know in the I played a few games not sure how many but I knew I was not going to be first choice midfielder that in the Premiership that's for sure so you're kind of thinking hopefully I can just keep myself in and around the squad and nick a few games because you've got to be realistic and and I would not have been the Brian's first choice that season but I did I managed to I think play 12 or 13 games which is good but um, yeah but in the summer you're just thinking wow like yeah not, not going to have to have another slog in the Championship for a season uh, which Was is- you given assurances that you're going to be you're going to stay with, or was you was it did you think um, you might get sold, or was you told that you're going to be part of the squad for the next season? Uh, he said, like he, he said, oh, obviously going to be bringing players in. Um, I can't remember if he said I could go on loan or not, but I think if you've waited no. that long to get there, no. yeah, exactly. <laughs> wait that long to get there. I think he did kind of say that. He said to me that if you want to go on loan, you can, but you wait that long to get to the Premiership, like you're not going to be going on loan anytime soon. I just said, look, I prefer to take my chance and wait here, and um, obviously you get you get seven subs anyway. So I was thinking oh, I might sneak on the bench here and there, and and yeah, I did. I managed to get a few games and. It takes a few injuries and you play a few games, but the one I was gutted yeah. about, um, we played early on in uh, early in the season. We played Chelsea away, and um, I was a massive, I say, massive Chelsea fan. And I was sub. I was thinking, oh, I just want to get ten minutes or something at Stamford Bridge, and we we were two one up. And he said to me, I'll go and warm up, like because one of our midfielders he, he'd been out injured and he was he was flagging a bit. He needed to come off. So he said, right, go and warm up, coming on, and then. In the time I went out to warm up, Chelsea scored two and went three two up, and I didn't get to come on. He had to bring oh. a striker on instead. How was your luck? Sick enough. Yeah, did, I was did, absolutely excited. Did you ever get to play at Stamford Bridge? No, no, that's that was the only day I went there. I warmed up and uh, you that played at Old Trafford, mate. So yeah, I know it's. I know it's not Chelsea, but you're still uh, playing in one of the best grounds in. in yeah, in, and that's it's true. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's like your boyhood club. Someone said, "Oh, you can play anywhere." It'd be yeah, of course. Your boyhood club, isn't it? Or, um, so yeah, I would, I'd have loved to have just come on and. Played what against. was what was Old Trafford like? Sorry, because I'm always being a United fan. Shit yeah. Absolute like, shit <laughs> Even for like, even for a non-United fan, was it? Is it still like an amazing feeling just to walk out that? Yeah, well, well say you go from like a, a kind of when we were all growing up watching football, United were no one got near them, did they? They just run everything, and they were. That's why I support them. Yeah, they were the big, they were the big boys. <laughs> yeah, and you, 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 at least you're honest. <laughs> and then you find out you've got them in the cup, and you think, oh wow. And, you never know. Um, it was Ian Dowie is in charge of commentary at the time. You don't know whether he's going to play a full team or a mixture or throw a few kids mm. in. But yeah, I just remember we travelled up there, um, staying in the hotel, and, and that afternoon he named the team and I was in it. And I was like, oh wow, playing at Old Trafford. And then you stand in the tunnel and as you walk out, um, it's not it's not like other clubs where if it's a League Cup game the ground's half full because if it's a League Cup game then loads of people who don't usually go go. So it was, um, it was totally full. Like you, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, I, I never go. I don't. I don't really go. I never go. South, South London Red, didn't you, Carl? What was the game? Golden bread. Was Was that at Old Trafford that you smashed the bar? Uh, no, that was, that was, Ewood, that was, was it the Cup. same cup run. Uh, no, that was the FA Cup. Was Blackburn and it was League Cup against Man United. But you yeah. smashed the bar, didn't you, from quite far out? Yeah, the yeah. Game. I remember watching that, and yeah, I was like, "Go on, Jay!" I was like, "Jesus." <laughs> Oh, you had that? No, he weren't. He was well, like, "What's he like, fucking yeah. doing? Yeah. What's he doing?" <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like coming back to Old Trafford, like it's, when you walk out, it's just how high it is. It's huge. It's just yeah. so big. I never played. I, mean, I know. I know a lot of the new grounds now are all kind of getting bigger. But at the time, I was like, "Wow, this is unbelievable." And you, I mean, you think you're gonna not not 
not going to lie, you think you're going to get spanked, don't you? You think you're playing Old Trafford. Pitch just seems, even though it's probably not that much bigger to what you're playing on, it feels humongous. It, look, it looks big on the TV. Yeah, I don't know why it is. It just right. feels massive as well. Right. Like the other end just seems forever where you can't hardly see it and <laughs> you think you're going to get a bit of a spanking. But yeah, to go and, and then to win the game, you think, wow, that's unbelievable. So, who, who was in that lineup against you when you played against Man United yeah, there? They were pretty much half and half. Like, I remember Ian Dowie saying to us, he saw the team sheet and he's like, right, you, like, you've got a chance tonight, lads. But they still had uh, John O'Shea, Nani, Anderson, um, PK. Big name. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. PK, <laughs> fucking hell, I forgot he was there. Yeah. It's, it's nice you're explaining Old Trafford because I mean, otherwise, <laughs> half, half <laughs> unseen on the telly. Keep, go, keep, keep going, Jay. Paint me that picture. Uh, uh, Kyle's Kyle done the virtual tour via the internet, but he's <laughs> never been there. He, he supported three clubs before he supported Man United, to be honest. Blackburn, Newcastle, uh, and Palace, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, saying they had, they, had, they had enough names out there that you think, oh, you actually are playing against them and not just against the youth team. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's brilliant, mate. Where, where did you play that night? Centre mid? Centre mid, yeah. We played three in midfield. I played centre mid with Stephen Hughes and Michael Doyle, I think. And what were they like? midfield? Yeah. Anderson? Uh, they were Anderson and I can't remember. Sure, there must the team sheet must be somewhere after I look and try and find it. We'll have to dig it out. Um, you got any of their, did you get any of their shirts or no? No, they weren't. They went to, um, so after the game, obviously, we were running over. We ran to our fans straight away to celebrate. We came back in and oh, we asked the kit man if we could, yeah, they weren't having none of it. They, were, they weren't happy at really? all. But, uh, we asked if we could change shirts and they were like, no, no chance. So, yeah, you see, it sums up Man United, Carl. You, you don't realize, man, they're all wankers. I'm <laughs> telling you for years. You knock us out, you can fucking go no, swivel if you get the shirts. Not a chance. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's not this, that, isn't it? It'll get knocked out. And then... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just I've, I've dug out their, their lineup actually while, while you was chatting there. So they had O'Shea, Chris Eagles, Thomas Kushak, Bardsley, PK, Nani, Lee Martin, Anderson, Johnny Evans, Danny Simpson, and Dong Fang Zhu. Oh, what a player. <laughs> the player. Oh dear. Yeah, oh. it's it an offside. Yeah, well, it's a, a decent side, to be fair. But um, sorry, Ball, did you have something to say, mate? Yeah, I saw your question your for Jay going back to Reading. Was Chadwick at Reading when you were there? No, he wasn't there. No. <laughs> no. Uh, again, um, I'm promoting under the cosh a lot here, rather yeah. than our own podcast. But the, the, if you see the interview with Chadwick, he just comes across as the nicest geezer that's ever walked this planet. Yeah. Like, He's the most humble bloke ever, considering what he was labelled as as a teenager. Yeah. All he ever, do you know all he ever wanted to do was play for bloody Cambridge? Really? Yeah. His yeah. Cambridge was like Real Madrid to him. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Because he was like Cambridge yeah. born and bred. He never got a move there then. Huh? He never got a move there off the back he of He did at the end, I think, didn't he? Yeah, I think yeah, he, he did go, go there, there the yeah. End. I think he went there for like a season or a season and a half, but... Oh. Yeah. He just, honestly, if you get to see the interview, I, 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 you know when it finishes and you think, I just want to be his pal. Yeah, yeah, be a mate of it. Because he was obsessed with Big Brother. He used to watch Big Brother 24 hours a day, even when they were in bed. Like, he used to watch the bits where they're sleeping, didn't he? he yeah, said, yeah, yeah. yeah, He was yeah. obsessed with it. Absolutely. Just did a bird singing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was all over it. Yeah, 108. And they're all... <laughs> Right. Obviously, like like you said there, Jay. Like you ended up, you you played twelve games in the Premier League um, that season for Reading. Um, in that in that season that you you played, who was sort of the best player that you came up against in the Premier League? Like we get we like we're gonna go through questions at the end anyway. Like your best player against and blah blah blah. But that season, did anyone sort of you play against and you was sort of like that's frightening? Yeah. Um... The two that stuck out, like uh, stood out. I'm talking about players in, up against in my position. Uh, one yeah. of uh, Yaya Torre. Oh, he was, yeah, he didn't, I didn't touch him, didn't get near. I don't think I ever even looked like getting the ball off him. Um, and right. it's, like, obviously, he's that good himself, but then you look at the players around him, you, know, you, you, try, you close them down, they just pass it to someone else, and it just make you look stupid, really. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other one was Jack Wilshire for Arsenal, he was class, really. I actually beat him in the air and he didn't like it. I won a header against him and he, he turned around and gave me a bit. Um, but yeah, he was, he was so good on the ball. Again, it's just players like, they just make you run. 
Um, there's a, there's a read like so I used to do like 15k a game in the Premiership, just chasing people. And, Fucking uh, hell! Yeah, it's crazy. I, really, I can't even drive that far. <laughs> I ran that far on Sunday. <laughs> so, Do you yeah. want to chip in with Wilshere there, Matty? As a go yeah, going back to players that are of a certain caliber of name, did you ever play against anyone and you just love them, and then you played against them and you thought you absolute prick? Uh, don't be, don't be shy, Jay. John Terry. Oh, yeah. didn't, no. <laughs> trying to you know, think. Did you ever come off the pitch thinking, oh, I just had such a different expectation of you, and you were just an arsehole? That's a good question, actually. Yeah, I'm trying to think. It was not like the ones that. Um, one who was quite, totally different to what I thought it'd be would be Wayne Rooney. I thought it'd be loud and that. But playing against United and he didn't say anything. It was really quiet. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anyone I didn't like. Uh, oh. Yeah, because there must be one on the other end of that, the opposite to Matty's question of people that you probably went in thinking, what an arsehole. He was all right. And you might have gone, oh, he's actually all right bloke. One who stands out, Joey Barton. He was he was really nice. Yeah. Really? Played, yeah, playing against him first game for Reading. Brendan Rodgers' first game, we played Newcastle away and we got thumped, but... Played into Joey Barton in midfield, and yeah, he was just. Was he uh, was he speaking French at the time, or was he? Fluent <laughs> French. I didn't have a clue what he was saying. <laughs> Being obviously my Celtic yeah. affiliation, I'm not, <laughs> not a massive fan of Joey Barton, if I'm going to be honest. But yeah, I mean, you saying that doesn't surprise me. Sometimes we build a picture us like the general public fans of like the heroes and villains of football. Yeah. I just wanted to see like yeah, anyone you thought where you just thought, oh no, not. Uh, Plenty I've played with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like any walker, like you play with player people and you think, oh, that's it. But, <laughs> but, yeah, um, but yeah, Joey Martin's one who I thought, oh, he's a nice guy. Actually, just had a chat and yeah, he's, he's one, one other one I wanted to ask you about because I just find the geezer completely fascinating from what I see on social media and that. Leon Knight, have you ever played against Leon Knight or do you know anything about Leon Knight? I played against him for Swansea. For, I was playing for Brentford against Swansea in the playoffs, and he played and he, he scored against us. Um, yeah, yeah just, he was just what, what you'd expect. But I didn't know. <laughs> well, but he, quite, quite loud on the pitch, but he, yeah. lived, no, he was class. You know, he did so well. Yeah. He's loud on Twitter as well. He's yeah, he's, he's an he's absolute. He's, he kills me. He's, so he's a boy and half, isn't he? He is. He's, he's so he's funny. He's blocked more times than Terry's blocked fucking <laughs> crosses, the geezer. <laughs> Um, and then obviously after Reading in the Premier League you ended up taking a move to Ipswich back down in the Championship um, how, how did that all come about Joe? Uh, well yeah I was, I was, I was with Reading and in January the, uh, Brian McDermott signed two midfielders I think Danny Gruffrey and uh, someone else another foreign lad and like I say I wasn't in the team I was, I was kind of fourth choice midfielder anyway so you signed two more and you write down the pecking order and he, he just said, he kind of said to me, oh, if you want to go on loan, I was like, yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, and then Mick McCarthy just called me up, actually, because I wasn't expecting to go out on loan. I didn't know if it was going to happen. It was quite near the end of the season, really. And I'd just been out the night before. It was on Tuesday night. I'd been out with my mates. I think I got smashed. I was hanging on the Wednesday. And um, Mick, McCarthy, Mick McCarthy called up and uh, he was like, oh, yeah, do you want to come on loan? I was like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Why not? Like, Was, was he the manager at Ireland at the time when, when you got your call-ups? No, Steve Staunton was. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah Mick's called me. He's like, do you want to come? Yeah, it happens that quick. Like, he called me on the Wednesday. Got a train down uh, train down there on Thursday night. Trained with him Friday and travelled to Peterborough on Saturday. So, yeah, it happens that quickly. And then, oh, yeah, to wow. spend the rest of the season with them. Like, they were they were fighting relegation, but we managed to stay up. And he said straight away, as soon as we stayed up, he's like, oh, look, I'm going to sign you for next year. Um, so, I did, yeah, sign for him. And, yeah, we, we went well. What was he like, Mick McCarthy? Because, like, from an outsider, look, like, he's never managed a club I support or anything, but... I love Mick McCarthy. I think he's a proper football man. And I think him and TC are a cracking team. I think, I think they was punching well above their weight for a few seasons, keeping Ipswich on such like short um, amount of money that they had to spend. I thought they'd done amazing to even stay in that division for a while. Yeah, they did. You're totally right there. Yeah. And, and like to, first of all, to keep them up and then to turn it tightly around and then start fighting in the playoffs as well. And exactly. Really, really fair manager, you know. Um, a lot of time, I got on really well with him. And he's one of those, even if he left you out, you never really got angry with him because you just always knew he was picking the best team that he thought um, mm. was going to do the job. And yeah, he, he, got, he, got, the, he, got, the, he got a lot out of me still. To, even though it's towards the end of my career, he got, he got a lot out of me, I thought. Um, yeah, was, got he manager, really good. was he a manager that, like, as you say, like quite straight up? Did he yeah. did he tell you a reason or was he? did he ever not tell you? Or 
No, no, he'd be always call you in and tell you that one. He's always he's, he's man management skills. I thought were class. Like even in the last season, there he called me and he said, "Look, we're going to sign Ryan Ryan Fraser for a season long loan, and he's going to play on the left." And <laughs> to be fair, like, what argument you got with that? I was thirty two, and uh, you got your Ryan Fraser coming from Bournemouth, who's class. Mm -hmm. I guess what I mean, like, yeah, like you can't have any argument with that. Um, so yeah, like, he just always tell you straight up how it is. Um, but you say like, we we got him really well, so he always said, "Look." not forcing you out you can stay around like you're, you're great lads have around the place and training and stuff and and you, and you will get your games if i need to use you but you're not going to be first choice and that's the that's the best thing to get as a player just being told straight up yeah 100 percent. and like, I, I looked through again some of the, the the squads of the time when you was at ipswich and some of the players again that's in the premier league now you've got david yeah. mcgoldrick aaron yeah. cresswell tyrone mings yeah. ainsley Mait maitland niles as well come on yeah. loan yeah um yeah, there was others that I put down: Johnny Williams, Daryl Murphy, Brett Pittman, two quality strikers there. Yeah. Um, did one of the questions off the back of that that I wanted to ask was, obviously Aaron Cresswell and Tyrone Mings were sort of like wonder kids that come through. Um, was it always obvious that they were going to become Premier League players? And out of them, was there anyone else sort of that come through at any of the clubs as well that you was at of similar age groups that? you looked at them as similar ability to them that could have gone on, but never did. Was there any sort of... Yeah, well, well um, um, so those two lads, yeah, you can always tell, like, it's, sometimes a player is in, in a club like that and you think, yeah, they're going to get a move any time now. Like, they just, they always seem to have an impact on the game and stand out. And even if you're getting beat, they seem to be the best player. And you just get a feel that you know that the scouts are always kind of watching them. Um, so I was playing a lot of time at Ipswich. So I was playing left mid. So I played a lot of time with Prezi, the left back, and Tyron Mings, the left back as well. So um, played a lot with them, which is, which is great. And you can't, yeah, you do know that, I mean, Tyrone is just such an athlete, you know, he had all the, all the attributes to, to make it to the Premier League. And no surprise he did. And Prezi would probably be similar kind of like, his ability was just unbelievable and great at set pieces and can pick a goal out of nowhere as well. So um, I'm trying to think of lads who didn't quite push on who I thought would. Uh, that's a harder one, really, because yeah. most, most of the time, to get into the, the young lads getting into the Premier League, like they do, they just they make it because you know, they're so talented that it's, it's always going to happen, really. Yeah, that's fair play. Yeah. Go on, Greg. Sorry, mate. I was just going to say, like, on that one, um, like, Freddie Sears. He obviously yep. came from West Ham, um, but what? Why do you think he didn't make it back up? Uh, I'm not sure, really. Again, it's just probably in, it fell into that bracket where he weren't starting all the time. You had David, um, David Goldrick, Daryl Murphy uh, playing up front as well. So mm. I think sometimes you 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 find you find yourself um, playing second fiddle to someone. It's just, it's hard to kind of. Get that, make that step back up. But he was, he was another quality player, Freddie. Like really nice lad as well. I like, had a lot of time for him, played a lot of games with him as well. But yeah, just sometimes you find yourself not in a team, and it's hard to get that rhythm and that routine going as well. But like uh, going back to Tyrone Mings as well, they signed him for ten thousand pounds. Yeah, Chippenham, and yeah. obviously coming from that level, like Chippenham to there, massive, massive, massive jump. Yeah. Like so, like I know you kind of you pushed on it, Terry. But straight away from signing from a club like that to coming into Ipswich, did you you just you just knew? Like obviously you said about the athletes, like athletic side of him, and and obviously he was very driven. Yeah. Um, but like to go on to play for England and doing what he's doing now, did you did you proper think that from from early doors? Uh, to be honest with you, like I. Yeah, I doubt he's going to hear this, but if um, no, I didn't. I wouldn't have thought he'd made. I thought he was going to make it far, but not as far as he did. You know, um, he must be surprised as well. Like it, thinking back on yeah. like from where he was then to where he is now, he must yeah. think to himself. I mean, cool, I've made it. Like, yeah. well, I was saying, there's one. There's one thing being an athlete and big, strong, and quick, and that gets you out of danger and out of trouble at a certain level. But then to go and do it at the next level, which he's done, I, I didn't quite, didn't expect that. I thought he'd get a move because. He's got that way about him. He's a confident lad. Um, I thought he'd get a move, but I didn't think he'd go as far as he has. Right, Did you see him as a centre half though? Because he was a left back when he all left. All, he was a he yeah. played full back, left back. Didn't yeah, he? yeah, he played left back for Ipswich. I, I think I, I, I've watched loads of him recently, but I always thought he was a good left back just for his pace. And um, I just thought he can get he can get up and down the pitch. And I think as as a left back, you've just got you've got that there, haven't you? You don't have to worry about too much playing the centre back. You've got so much more everywhere else to yeah. look at. Well. I think left. I thought left back would be where he. Where's he playing now? Is he playing centre back at the moment? Centre half now. Yeah. Yeah. 
I yeah. don't think he's as mobile as what he was. He's not. Rapid. No, he's bulked up a bit, isn't he? He was quite yeah. slim, though. He was quite right. slim, guy. Yeah. He was rapid. When I played him, he was so quick, you know. He's still quick. I mean, from what, like, obviously watching on the telly and that now, he still looks very quick. But from, I mean, I still, every now and then it flashes up on Sky Sports, like your game against Norwich uh, in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And he played, he obviously played left back then. And, yeah, as you say, the athleticism that he had, he was running up and down then. Whereas now he's, he has, he's turned into a bit of a centre back. He hasn't really, he doesn't look like. I think he could do a that. lot of that was on because he had a bad injury at Bournemouth, didn't he? And then when he came back from mm. that, they moved him centre off. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can say either of them really. He's, he's got the attributes to play, you boy. Yeah, that's quality. That. Um, Back to obviously while you for the time while you was at Ipswich, we had a couple of questions come over from from guys, um, Ipswich fans. Yeah. Um, one of me, one of them's a friend of a friend of mine. His name's Alan Castle, and he's he he's basically wants to know your opinion on like the club now, basically, and yeah. them falling into League One. And what's is there any sort of things that you could see it was going in that way? And and um, obviously like they're sticking by Paul Lambert for at the moment, despite the fans obviously completely turning on him and they, they want him out massively. But it, like, have you got any opinions on sort of Ipswich and the state of the club now? Yeah, I'm surprised because when I was there, we got in, we'd get into the playoffs and I think Mick had a real good structure there. As you say, he'd done a lot of what he had to do with not a lot of money to spend. He went about mm. a budget of a lot of the clubs in the in the championship and he still managed to be fighting up alongside him. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's never nice when you see a club you used to play for not you know struggling a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a it's a slippery slope, you know. As soon as something goes wrong, it's hard to get out of it. And um, I hope they hope they do. But yeah, I just think you know, since when, when Mick left, it didn't go didn't go too well after that, did it? No. And he was quite happy with that as well, based on that interview that he done. If you remember, yes, <laughs> when he was talking about it and he said it's gone well since they got rid of me, isn't it? That went yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, yeah. Sometimes you've got to be careful what you wish for as as fans and. What your, what your expectations are. I mean, I know everyone wants to do well and achieve, but I think Mick was doing well. And sometimes you have got to stack a step back as a fan and go, right, what's he got to work with and what kind of jobs he's doing? Um, 100%. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah, you've got to be careful what you wish for. Yeah. Aaron, uh, Darren Bent was on TalkSport today and um, he kind of got asked the same sort of thing. And uh, he, he was just saying a few things that obviously I didn't know what was going on, like massively. Like there's been, he's saying when he was at the club, like, um, the fans and 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 the board and everything like they were quite cohesive, but now it's just like totally gone. And like the fans are kind of causing trouble, like uh, stopping training sessions, setting off flares and stuff like that. And he was just like, "That ain't Ipswich. That's not how how it was." No, exactly. They say that's a that's a rapid uh, decline there, isn't it? When you see things like that happening at your club, that's not, that's you never want to hear that. Um, yeah, you shouldn't be having that because as you say, you haven't got a club that's happy. Um, and I think as soon as the fans turn against the board, it's just your It's a bit like that commentary, you know, the fans turned against the board there. I think it was C2 or something like that who were in the club. And yeah, it just, yeah, you always are kind of loggerheads then really. And as players, you do, like, you shouldn't affect what happens on the pitch, but you know that something's not quite happy in the background. Yeah, I think it always sort of outlays onto the pitch eventually, doesn't it, when there's a lot of bad stuff going on behind the scenes? It always Definitely. affects the, the team eventually. Yeah, it always happens. Yeah, you're right. It does, mate, yeah. Um, another one actually uh, we had a question come over from a guy who it, obviously it goes on to what you're doing now but which we'll come on to um, shortly but he he basically sent oh, it was a guy from m &S Car Park in Ipswich he said you he used to play golf with you his name's Dave okay um, yeah. and he basically said would you rather ride in the Derby or play in the Masters was his question and he said he hopes you're well as well uh, Masters all day long <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'd have, to, I'd have to lose about eight stones to ride in the derby. <laughs> let, let, if, if, if you do do that, Jay, let us know. Let us know the secret, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, I'm not, definitely the Masters. Yeah. And if you ever if you ever play in the Masters as well, I'll caddy for you. Yeah. yeah definitely. <laughs> was it golf, football, horse racing? Was it in that order? <laughs> uh, uh, definitely golf at the top. <laughs> yeah. That's blinding, mate. Um. So yeah, like. Obviously, like you, you spent a few seasons at Ipswich. When it come to sort of the end, did you make up your mind beforehand that you you knew you were sort of done with the game, or was it made up for you? 
a little bit. So that, that last season there, um, Mick called me in at the start of the season, actually. He was so honest. He's like, look, you know, you're not really going to be in my plans. He said, I love you. You're a good lad. You never do anything wrong around the, the training ground and that and love having you here. But if you can get yourself a move somewhere else and take it. So I was like, yeah, all right. So I had to look, look around actually. And um, one, my best mate was acting as my agent then. Literally my best mate just called up clubs and be like, oh, are you interested in that? And, is it uh, Jeff? Yeah, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Jeff. <laughs> 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 no, so he was uh, he actually spoke to Fulham and um, you know, the only problem with Fulham was uh, I'd love to have gone there because it's going to be back home um, but I had one year left at Ipswich on good money and Fulham were only going to offer me one year on half of that and I was like oh, I can't do that so I kind of said to him look if you give me two years on half of it I'll definitely take it because it's the same amount and they're like no you're too old like we only give players over 30 like a year so I just said no like, you know, I had to think about it I said oh, sorry I'm just going to stay at Ipswich on, and take it and said to Mick, I was like, look, I've got no interest in going out on loan. I'm happy here. I enjoy living here. I love the club. I love like, getting well with you and all the lads. Like, unless the dream loan move comes up, then I'm not going to be taking it. And he's like, yeah, fair enough, he said. And um, yeah, but he, he was to his word. I, I didn't play that season. I played two cup games. Uh, I was on the bench a few times. But I didn't play one minute of league football that season. So, um, but again, he, he knew that was going to happen. And it was my choice to go, go ahead with it. Um, yeah, and, and as the season went on, I was just like, oh, I'm not enjoying this anymore. Um and I kind of got around Christmas time. I kind of thought to myself, yeah, I'm kind of thinking about maybe packing this in at the end. I was going to be 32 at the end of the season. So I thought, uh, maybe I'd do something else. And then in between that time in, in uh, April, in April, my mum passed away really suddenly. And then that things like that just put you, change your whole life and puts things in perspective. And I was, as soon as that happened, I was like, yeah, I've got to do what's going to make me happy. And I wasn't happy playing football anymore. Um, and I thought, you know, life's too short. That's a, that's a, that's a example of it there. And um, hey, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. I just thought, you know what, I'm going to do something else. About it. I've enjoyed my career, but I, I sent someone else the other day. I didn't want to keep milking it because, uh, like, a few of my performances, I could tell, like, I was always trying, but I wasn't performing and wasn't giving the performances that I, the fans deserve. And at the end of the day, the fans are paying your wages, and I weren't going to go somewhere else and just milk it off them and if I wasn't enjoying it. So, no, oh, fair play to you, Joe. I admire that, mate. Yeah, just um, yeah. end of the season decided, yeah, I thought I'd knock it on the head. I went on, actually, I went on a uh, trial at Burton, Burton Albion. Oh, yeah. Um, it was Cluffy like my, there. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I, I, the reason I went there is because one of my mates was playing for him and um, I got on really well with him. And then my middle brother, he lives in up that way. And I thought, oh, do you know what? If I can get another year there, uh, play with my mate, live with my brother. That'd be quite a good fun thing to do. Um, but yeah, he, he was honest as well. He's like, oh, look, just look at someone a bit younger. I was like, all right. And as soon as that happened, I had a few phone calls from other clubs, but I, I was just honest. Like uh, Gareth Ainsworth called me up and I was just honest with him. I said, look, to be honest with you, look. I don't think I should sign for you because my heart's not in it. And he was like, yeah, fair enough. And that was it. And no, Fair there. play to you. So, yeah. yeah. Was, go, go on, Kyle. Sorry, mate. Yeah, so, I, I actually see something today. I want to take you back to the start of your Ipswich career sort of thing. Obviously, once you signed a permanent deal. Yeah, okay, yeah. I see 89 games for Reading. <laughs> no goals. Yeah. And in your first game, your first pretty competitive game for Ipswich. Against Reading, wasn't it? Score, Against Reading yeah. at the Majeski, wow. and and I see it was in the 16th minute. Was 16 not your shirt number as well? I mean, it was meant to be, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, definitely. Oh, so I went mad. I was so happy with that. Uh, some people say you don't celebrate against your old club, but I didn't. I was straight into it. Did, did you celebrate? Did you go? Oh, did you, yeah, did you go? I, was, I was jumping all over the lads and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought well, that's it. That's it's just mad, isn't it? Like again, it's just I, I thought that stuff only happens on Football Manager, but you've literally got it, like sixteenth minute. It's your old shirt number against your old team. Yeah, I just, mean, no, yeah, I bet you must have been buzzing. That stadium was silent. I think they were just in shock. The Reading fans. Yeah. Oh, that was he scored. <laughs> <laughs> he can fight the fucking net. It's because they all played with you for so long, Jay. They just left you unmarked, mate. That's yeah, all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let him shoot. They couldn't believe it. They're like, how has he scored against us? <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, like, like you said, you decided to, to sort of hang them up. Yeah. Um, what happened then? What was your sort of next move? Did you sort of move back down south? and? Yeah, literally hung them up and then moved back down, spent a bit of time with friends and family and that, and then um, did a bit of work with my dad. My dad's a builder, so uh, worked, like, just did a bit of labour with him, really. I because when, when I was playing, I, even though I was never a million miles away, like you do, you don't see your family as much as you'd like to. And you, of course, sometimes, yeah. You, sometimes you go months without seeing my dad. So I was like, oh, do you know what? I'd love to spend a bit of time with dad. So did a bit of labour with him, which was good, but I wasn't too good at that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I oh, enjoyed it. Hey, 
Carl can vouch for that. He waited 18 years to meet you, mate. <laughs> You was always yeah. busy. You was. I said, no, he's honestly, busy. you'll meet him. You will meet him. <laughs> honestly, every every Andrew's gig, yeah. I would only t- listen. Don't tell Greg, but I don't turn up. <laughs> he was like, he was like, do you want to come to the party? I was like, is Jay coming? Yeah, Jay is coming. Honestly, geez, the amount of times I stood there at these parties, like every time a door opened, I've got my autograph book in one hand, pen in the other. I'm like, he'll be here in a minute. I, you you could have signed my tits and all sorts. You could have done. I was. Never turned up, mate. Oh, man, Never yeah. turned up. Like I said to you before, I thought you was a myth at one point. Yeah. <laughs> Greg was giving him the heads up, mate. He's like, one of my mates is an absolute pest. Don't turn up. He's here. Yeah, don't. <laughs> I say one, one of the one of the parties was after you played United at the Majeski. Hmm. It was a four three. It was oh, it was yeah. Keith's birthday. Yeah, Greg Keith's birthday. Yeah. And I thought, there's no way he's going after he gets out the old shower at football and get, he ain't going to come down to the Majeski to Walletoo <laughs> Cricket Club to have a little party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. But the book was there just in case you did. <laughs> I'd, I'd be buttons undone on my shirt and everything. I thought, I'll get these out quickly. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's and been a long time. So then, obviously, after like you, you'd done a bit of labouring with your old man and that, how, how did it come about that you've got into what you're doing now? Because I, I don't know if many people know, but you're. You've you've moved down to to Somerset and you're you're a stable lad at the moment, and you yeah. Well, I I, I want, I've, I've never loved horse horses or racing forever, but when I signed for Coventry, my 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 roommates at the time was a guy called Ben Turner. Yeah. He, a few years younger than me, but he was my first roommate there, and we used to like travel away. And then uh, one day he was like, "Oh, listen, like, mate, do you mind watch a bit of horse racing?" I was like, "Yeah, go for it." Like, knock yourself out, and uh, so he back the horse racing on, started watching it, and then he started explaining it to me. And um, so, yeah, then we kind of got involved in just like a couple of shares in a couple, just for a bit of fun, like like cheap stuff. And it was, yeah, it was good. And then the more I used to go and watch them train at the yards and I thought, oh, wow, that's interesting. And then I used to go to go, actually go to the races more and watch them. And I thought, wow, it's unbelievable. And then, yeah, I just kind of thought to myself, oh, I'd love to see what it's like to ride a horse. Um, and whenever I used to go and watch the horses train, I always used to love the atmosphere at the yards and like, well, oh, I'd love to try that. So, yeah, I just thought um, I signed up for the, at the Northern Racing College and you do a 12 week course there. And they teach you like how to ride horses and look after them and that, and then you go and find a job. So that's pretty much what I did. Bloody oh, hell, uh, mate! Yeah, yeah it, was, I, I, it was. It was literally like it was Christmas time. I, would, I was just finished work. My dad and I was like, oh, "What do I do now?" And I was like, "Right, I want to go and like ride the horses." So end of January, I applied for the course, and the course started in March. And then twelve week course, and then I came down here uh, to Somerset to work for a trainer called Philip Hobbs. So yeah, so I just yeah do all the stuff like looking after the horses, riding them every day, and stuff like that. So it's, it's good fun. Love That's it. fantastic. Yeah, Obviously, sometimes. Matty, you're you're a bit a bit of an horse racing fan. Have you got any sort of question, yeah. for Jay, in regards yeah, to the horse yeah. racing? I've got a couple of uh, questions there, Jay. How did you find the transition from football to horse racing? I mean, does it have anything in common at all in terms of the training or yeah. the day to day stuff? I'd say, you like for the actual jockeys, is that like, the discipline is probably very similar to uh, to you know being a professional sportsman. Like down here, I'm just basically working with horses, so. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, the, the hours are hard and you, you have to be kind of dedicated to the job, like very similar to football, like you, you have to work Christmas Day and stuff like that. So um, you miss out on a bit of time when your friends would be socialising like you wouldn't be. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just like a kind of, I think the jockeys would have a lot more in common with the, with the footballers with, with, in the fact that you have to, you, you know, it's your, it's your job and you have to be very disciplined and dedicated to it. Um, but I mean, the hardest part was like to get onto the course at the Northern Racing College, you only had to, you, to look, you couldn't be any any over 11 stone and at the time when I was playing football I was 12 and 12 just over 12 and I finished playing and obviously put a bit on well, through uh, indulging and uh, so yeah I had, to, I had to lose like two stone in two months just to get on the flipping course and that was hard work yeah I was, know, I'd have to cut my legs off <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I've heard some stories about jockeys and kind yeah. of the stuff they have to do to lose weight is it true that they have to sit in a sauna for like an hour fully clothed and Stuff like that. Just that's what I've heard. Yeah, yeah, no, like, like um, so I live with a jockey, and he's like, his his weight's pretty good naturally, but like every now and then he'll have to do a lightweight, and yeah, you, you'd just be out running, sweating in the bath, sweating, uh, can't eat very much. Um, it's not all the time. It's only if they got to do a really lightweight, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to do. It. I mean, you, we all know it's like if you haven't eaten, you get get angry and oh. <laughs> your changes. Yeah. So, um, I all know what hangry is. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's been getting angry now. Everywhere. It's been about an hour and forty since he's had anything. <laughs> Come on, these pancakes ain't gonna fr- toss themselves, boys. Come on. But, um, but yeah, it's good. It's good to be involved in it and seeing what the jockeys have to go through. But 
I mean, I, I just love being on the horses every day and it's not the same as riding in a race, but you, you still get to do a lot. And yeah, I, I, I love riding them. But yeah, it's long hours, you know, it's hard work. Um, yeah, I can, I can not work. Getting, not getting any younger. I mean, like last week when it's cold, fuck, I mean, that was horrible. Yeah. Honestly, it was just not very pleasant at all, but... Yeah. What, how how far are you away from? So do you have to have like a jockey's license or something like that? How does it work? Is it yeah, if, if I mean if you wanted to ride in a race or something like that, you have to become an amateur jockey, get an amateur license. But that's not, that's not going to happen. You know, I'm too old and not good. like it's, it's being a jockey and like these young lads who are good at it. This is something that's born and bred into them. They've been living on the horse since they were, you know, could walk basically. Uh, so I'm very late to it, but I, I just enjoy doing it as a as a job. What I'm doing now, I really do. Um, it's good fun. And if I got to ride in like a charity race or something like that, that'd be good. I'd, I'd probably do that. Um, but yes, I mean, as far as anything else goes, no, it's not, not going to happen. I'd, I'd love to travel around a bit and go to other yards and even you can America, Australia, places like that. And there's always places to go and ride horses. And, because uh, the, Hob, the Hobbs Yard is quite, it's quite a big name, isn't it? It's, yeah, especially yeah. like it's been around for years and years and they've had some, some really good horses. And big winners, that's yeah. What me, yeah, that's what we brought me down here. It's like, like, it'd be one of the top five trainers in the country, you know, so it's, yeah. it's a great place to work. A lot of horses here. And I've got on really well with all the staff and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's a good well, place to be. And Somerset's a nice place to live as well, you know. Yeah, I've been when I was younger, I used to go to Burnham on Sea quite a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I know Somerset a little bit. It seemed yeah. like very nice people down there. Yeah, exactly. It's great. It's just a, it's a, it's a different way of life, really. It's relaxed. Relaxed. Yeah. yeah. It's been hard in lockdown because you know, before before coronavirus happened, like we'd go to work and there'd be like pubs we'd go to and loads of stuff to do. And I say the, the, the beach isn't too far away. Um, but like the last the last six months or so, I've been there. It's been tough because it's just going to work, coming home, going to work, coming home. It's the same for everyone all over the country. But like the kind of what you what you take that you enjoy in the countryside, like the pubs and stuff like that, is is taken away from you. So des as, as we all are desperate for the pubs to open. <laughs> Not wrong. Um, just a couple of questions I wanted to ask with regards to the horse that you co-owned with Ben Turner. Yeah, uh, Mr. Miyagi, I That's believe. Right, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we we, we got him. We we're very lucky to have him. He was um, say horse racing is not like owning a horse, and unless they win, it's, it's it's mainly a hobby, really. It's like people say to me, oh, it's expensive. It's but I'd say to people, stop playing golf. Like you don't make money from playing golf, do you? You spend money. So it's a bit similar yeah. to that. But <laughs> we, were, we were lucky with that horse. He actually he paid his way, so we kind of broke even on him. But he, yeah, he was he was a he was we were lucky to own him, and he took some good meetings. He won a couple of times at Cheltenham and stuff. And yeah, uh, I've, heard, he, I've definitely heard the name. I'm just. Trying yeah. to think in my head if I ever backed it, which was yeah, he might have done. Yeah, he won. He, I mean, he, he just had a few injuries. He, he won. He raced sixteen times and he won seven times out of that. So that's a good return. Great, so, great strike rate. Great. Yeah, he's, he's well, retired down it, here. Was it jump? Was it jumps or flats? Jumps. He was jump source. Jumps. Yeah. So, but yeah, he's retired now and he's just he's a, he's, a, he's in a farm up the road. So I look after him, go and see him a couple of times. All right. Nice. He, oh, he, lovely. He, that's tough. that's quality. Yeah. So I look at giving him a nice home after racing because that's the thing when horses retire, a lot of them nowhere for him to go so at least i can look after him and, and uh, go and oh, see him now. nice yeah that's quality mate that really yeah. love that yeah that is brilliant jay no because like you, you get people all these animal rights people at the moment that come out with all the stick of, about horse racing but they're treated like royalty aren't they these yeah. horses oh yeah they're so I mean, looked after the hours we spend with them like all our horses tonight they've all got a duvet and a sheet and a rug on top of them like go in there we have to we check them all the time. So even when we're riding them, you know, we all love the horses we're with and we I look after certain horses every day and ride certain horses and they get all the attention that they, they need really. So, um, and it's, and that's what they're bred to do. And in the day, like you hear, obviously there's some instances where it's not nice to see, but it's part, it's part of the part of the sport really. And if, yeah. if there wasn't a horse racing there, then these, where would these horses go? You know, they wouldn't have a job. They got a Findus probably. <laughs> 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 Um, well, no, that's blinding, Jay. Just obviously to, to finish everything up with, with, with our, our chat, just want to bring it back to, to your boyhood club, really, Chelsea, and your your sort of thoughts on how things are going now. Like, Do you think it was the right move, getting rid of Frank and bringing in Thomas Tuchel? And what do you reckon with how it's going at the moment? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I kind of touched on earlier, don't I, with managers, it's just so easy to knee-jerk sack them. And Frank Lampard's a Chelsea legend, isn't he? And I think... I think it, maybe when he took over, everyone was a little bit wary. Like, oh, if this doesn't go right, then it's not going to it's not going to look good because you know if it didn't go right, you knew what was going to happen. He was going to get sacked. Um, mm. But then you look at United and Solskjaer when he took over. You know, like he did well, and then they had a bit of a sticky patch, didn't they? And they could have easily sacked him 
and now look at him like, like he's doing well there. So I think mm. it's just so easy to sack a manager nowadays. And um, you know, I, I wasn't following him too closely, but yeah, it's just part. It's part. Of, it's, it's the modern game, isn't it? Really. So hundred percent. Yeah. Because because there's so many people throwing money around. They they got you know the owners have got <laughs> no qualms in paying a manager's contract off and just getting someone else in. So. I'm sure if they didn't have the money to pay him off, then they wouldn't be sacking him. <laughs> no, that's true. Roman's definitely got the wedge. I'll give him that. <laughs> Go on, Greg. Sorry, mate. Yeah, no, just going back to, like, obviously on the Chelsea part now. Um, so when you got to that game, who, who was, when you was at Snapper Bridge, and I know you didn't get on, but who, who on that day stood out? Who was the best player for them on that day? I think Fabricas might have been playing for him then. Is he playing? Have a guess. Oh, I, can't, I can't remember Greg to win this with me, mate. Uh, I know you've got to cast your mind back. I know, mate. He's blanked it out, mate. That's what that is. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, who was playing? Oh, I was trying to think who was playing for them in midfield because I was watching going, oh, God, I've still got to come and play against. <laughs> Do you know what? I'd, I'd have to have to see the team sheet to remember it. Um, Try it, yeah. Yeah. Tell. <laughs> Tell. Yeah, I'll have to get out, mate. Um, <laughs> just a, a couple of random questions, and just to finish yep. things up, just based like just sort of a quick fire thing to go through, like to sum up your career. Yep. Um, you already mentioned best player you played with was that Gilfie then? Yeah, Gilfie would yeah definitely. 100%. Yeah, best player, play. best player you played against. All right. So biggest name from like our era, and we grew up watching football would have been Patrick Vieira, because obviously oh, like, wow. part of the uh, that Arsenal team that. The, you know, um, the one that went the whole season on, on beat and stuff like that. Uh, so he would have been the biggest name. He was right at the end of his career. I think it was, it was the FA Cup game for Reading against Way at Man City and played it him. Uh, but the actual best uh, one on one um, played against Sen in a friendly once. Michael Sen in a preseason friendly, and he was so good. Uh, yeah, he was an, he was a beast, wasn't he? He was, yeah. And run for about a week, couldn't he? Yeah, yeah. Probably would say one on one. Probably Yaya Torre. Yeah, he was playing seven. Oh. Some know. names there, mate. <laughs> I know, I've, I've played with Greg Andrews, and you've played with Yaya Torre. Listen, you've got a privilege, mate. <laughs> um, you know most, what? I agree. I agree. <laughs> most underrated player you ever played with? Oh, that's a good question. Mikel Ledgerwood. Oh, he was a good player. Yeah, yeah, underrated. I, I actually think. I, I'm not a fan of I'm not a fan of him. I wasn't yeah. a fan of him, but <laughs> that's what he's saying. He's underrated. I played a, I played with him because he was centre mid and we played a lot together. And oh, he's just a mountain of a man and quality guy as well. And just talk you through the game and you could rely on him so much, so strong. And yeah, I, I thought he was. I mean, Reading fans actually loved him again. He did really well there. But I mean, I mean, underrated is in the fact that you know some people might watch him go, oh, you know, he wouldn't stand out all the time. But yeah. That's what I'm saying. He, he never stood. He never stood out for me. That's what I'm saying. I, I've, I've never actually rated him at all. Yeah. Did he ever play centre back? Uh, he probably could. He could have done. Yeah, he had the size to anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the worst trainer. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, Leroy Leiter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long does he take in the shower as well? Is it? Long? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Hardest player you've played with? Uh, hardest. Uh, probably, yeah, probably would be Leon McKenzie. He'd be the toughest lad. Yeah, I thought it would be. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Hardest you played against? Uh, oh, uh, Nigel De Jong. Oh. Yeah. He was similar to Essien. Like, you just try and give him a shoulder and <laughs> you just bounce off him. <laughs> I love De Jong. He's an animal, man. Yeah, he's an animal, yeah. He really stands up and also in the neck, didn't he? In the yeah. World Cup final. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it was the biggest diva. Oh, biggest diva. That's a good question, that. Uh, give Clinton Morrison probably. <laughs> oh, Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Jeff, Jeff, you know what, mate? <laughs> But lovely, yeah. lovely, lovely, lovely guy as well. Me, I got on so well, Clinton. Really, really good lad. But yeah, I have to say, biggest D here, probably. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, funny man. Oh, funny man. A few, a few of them. Uh, and the guy played of a he played right back for uh, Reading when we went up. Um, a guy called Andy Griffin. Oh yeah, great. Yeah. 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 yeah, and uh, and Noel Hunt as well. He's a funny lad. 
Oh, yeah, hadn't he? Yeah. We had him at Leeds as well. Yeah, yeah that's right, yeah. No one? He weren't great for us. We were know. good well, mates with him. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which manager yeah. which manager was the best player when they took part in training uh, Ian Dowie yeah. <laughs> he really loved it yeah he just loved getting involved <laughs> yeah um, obviously like in the dressing rooms and that you obviously you get a lot of people putting their music on who had the worst music taste that used to take oh, over all of them <laughs> <laughs> I used to hate all the music that these lads used to put on. Uh, yeah, no one would stand out for that because most of the change rooms, I'd always be like, oh, I'd have to listen to this shit again. <laughs> <laughs> would have been my cup of tea, any of it, really. <laughs> Worst dressed? Uh, oh. oh, Stephen Hunt, I think. He's so loud. Oh. Do you remember that time of match of the day we had that hat on <laughs> like, with tot and a uh, cravat as well? Oh, yeah, terrible. <laughs> He's a bit out there, is he? Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> um, part of, you mentioned earlier, with the singing for the new clubs and that, who was the best singer you ever saw? Uh, Shane Long. He could play guitar and sing. He was, yeah. yeah. No way. Yeah, whenever he's got up pre-season tours and stuff like that, he'd bring his guitar and I would, like, you'd be allowed out on the last night of something so we'd have a few beers and Long would be on the guitar and singing. He was really good. Quality. What a player. Yeah, yeah, very good player, yeah. I like him, yeah. I love his energy. Yeah, yeah. Another one we, I was afraid any day. Just had a great career since then, you know, done really well. Yeah. I don't know if it was Brian McDermott who brought him in at Reading because he was a scout before, wasn't he, Brian McDermott? Yeah, and he, he right. obviously had an eye for a player because they got him from like some Irish club, didn't they, for next to yeah, nothing? He did. That's, he's, that's the thing about Brian. Like, it's not like he was, I think we were all surprised he actually got the job because he was, he, when he was there, he was a scout. He was like yeah. chief scout there. And then all of a sudden, uh, Brendan left and then uh, Brian's going to take over. We're like, what? He's a scout, isn't he? And then, yeah, he's obviously <laughs> done done that well for the club, yeah. Well, I think he's back doing that now at Arsenal, I think he is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Reading fans love him there for what he did, like, save, you know, keeping us up and then getting promoted, so. Of course, yeah, it was unreal, wasn't it? Uh, is it? Yeah. Um, I was going to ask, was there any clubs you come close to signing for and didn't, but you mentioned a few yeah. earlier on with, with Wolves and, um, was it Swansea, Swansea. that one? Was yeah. there any others? Uh, Barnsley. Yeah, I went up to, I got a train up to Barnsley and had a look around. Um, that was before signing for Coventry. Um, yeah, and I just I, yeah, had a look around, but in the open Coventry come calling, I was like, yeah, Coventry's the one. Fair play. Yeah. Um, best atmosphere you, you played in, either a single game or like a stadium in general? Uh, I do you know, the atmosphere at Goodison Park was class because it's in one of those old stadiums. Like the new ones are good, don't get me wrong, but like that because that, that's an old stadium. Um, yeah, I love the atmosphere there. And then uh, the playoff semi final, um, Ipswich and Norwich, because obviously the rivalry there, yeah, and, and then and to be in the playoffs, like the noise there was just unreal. I'm, I'm, brilliant, but like one of my favorite grounds actually is QPR because it's, it's right on top of you. And they hated me anyway because I played for Brentford and they used to always give me stick left hands, so um, <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty good. And best set of away fans you played against, it might be QPR. But... Um, he wants you to say Leeds here, by the way, yeah, so yeah, just be careful. Leeds <laughs> yeah, Leeds is good, actually. Yeah, I love, love playing at ah, yeah. No, it's but, yeah, it's, Again, it's similar to Goodison Park in the way that it's got all that history. And, like You turn up there and you know you think of all the players have ever played there and stuff. It's just, just unreal. But uh, Newcastle, their fans are unbelievable. Mm. Some noise there. They're mental, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All got shirts off in January and <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> lunatics. Um, and last one, yeah. who's your, like your best mates in football? Sort of people that you played with that you still keep in touch with, uh, and so you... can you get them on the podcast for us and all? Yeah, I'll try. So yeah, Ben Turner, get on really well with him. Uh, Jonathan Douglas. It's weird because he when he went to Ipswich, we didn't really play that much together, but we just got on really well. Um, both the Hunt brothers, uh, good mates with them. God, so many to name, really. Um, Andy Griffin, I'm on the mention there, the funny guy. Uh, yeah, I've met, made loads of loads of good mates in football, but yeah, Ben Turner's probably probably my best mate in football. That's quality. Um, and yeah, that, that's that then, really, Jay. Thank you for, for coming on and having a chat with us, mate. Oh, sorry, Joe, another one, Joby McEnough. He's a top lad. Oh, Joby McEnough. Joby McEnough. Da, da, da. <laughs> He's a good player. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't not give him a mention. He was my captain at Reading when we won the league, so... He's another, like, top, top lad. 
Is he still playing? He was still playing for like a lower league team like last yeah, year or something. Steven, was he? I don't know if he's still. There. Yeah, I thought he was one of the. Did you go Leighton Orient for a bit? I, I thought, thought he was Leighton Orient actually. Yeah. Yeah, it might have been Orient or Steven. He's not too sure, but yeah, I haven't spoken to him for a while. But um, yeah, t- really good captain, like top man as well. Yeah, he was a good footballer actually. Yeah, he was. Yeah, so like, really talented. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's, still, yeah. he's still at Leighton Orient. He? Oh, he looked down, yeah, he's still at Orion. I thought, yeah. I thought he was at Orion, no, yeah. He's still there. Yeah, he's there as well. <laughs> oh, fair play to him. But yeah, like I said, Jay, thank, thanks for coming on, mate. Really appreciate oh, thanks, that. Thanks for me on. Thank you, good, Jay. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you, mate. Yeah, yeah. so I'll try and, try and get a couple of lads I know. If, like, I'll, I'll get, put them in touch and get them to come on. Definitely. Top man, thank you for that. And yeah, thanks yeah. for everyone for, for listening and watching on YouTube now. So, uh, yeah, until next time. See you later. Yeah, thank you.